Good evening, everybody. Hi, I'm just going to presume that you can see me and that I haven't messed up the very beginning of the campaign <laughs> because that would be that would be just embarrassing and I'm not inclined to embarrass myself. Anyway, hi, welcome to the North Newest Stories Told campaign. I'm Holly, aka Bread Witchery. Um, I will be the facilitator for this evening and for the following two Sundays because it's a three episode campaign. Um, we're going to be running Wicked Lies and Alibis, which is an Art Deco inspired murder mystery. Uh, system. It has several um, different cases in it and that kind of thing. And we're going to explain the system as we go. It's relatively simple. Um, so if you're a fan of just like role play and character interaction and gals being pals, this is the this is the campaign for you. Also, there's murder. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> anyway, before we begin, um, I was wondering, uh, we will introduce the characters when the story starts. But for now, um, if the players can introduce themselves, that would be great. Um, well, let's start with Hannah. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, I am Louise Hannah. Uh, uh, Louise Hannah, literally everywhere. I'm very excited to be playing this and I'm a little nervous, um, but it's lovely to see so many of you here and, and excited, so yeah. Uh, Nova. Yes, Nova. Hello, my fellow Christians. Uh, my name is Nova Lisi. I am your friendly neighborhood sorceress. I am uh, at Nova Lisi on all things and I'm a variety streamer. Uh, the Lord doth command you follow me on twitch.tv slash uh, I'm very excited about this. Amen. Lovely. Thank you. And Krista, could you introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Christology, not as holy as Nova, but um, uh, you can find me on Twitch and YouTube at Christology and Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, Christology TV. And I'm a noob, by the way, so um, bear with me, but I, I think I'll do a great job. You're going to do amazingly. Um, and Nix? Hi, I am Nega Oryx. I am a full-time variety streamer, voice actor, tabletop RPG player for Saving Throw Show and Table Story. And uh, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you so much for being on the show. And Terry? Yeah, oh my gosh, hello everyone out there. What do you talk? We're in the 1920s and I'm just excited to be here. Um, you can find me a lot of different places, but at the Terry Gamble all over the internet, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, and uh, yeah, just hanging out on sometimes at Saving Throw Show with Nega Oryx, which is fabulous, and sometimes other places at Ripley Improv uh, Twitch on Friday nights doing some improvisational acting acting um where we pretend to be like we're in a hospital and i play the head of cardiothoracic surgery so lots of great times happen and i like i like pretending and let's play some games today i'm so excited thank so you excited well. that's right no worries <laughs> thanks for being here and also i've seen that improv thing and it's super cool so highly recommend that um, also, thank you so much, everyone, for the gifted subs. That's super duper kind of you. We also do have a uh, bar on the screen, um, which is titled Cause a Kerfuffle, uh, because we decided to make it a little bit atmospheric compared to the previous title of it, which I'm not going to say because we have mature content filter off. Anyway, um, it is at $100, and if we reach the goal uh, this stream, something will happen to the characters. Maybe it'll be good, maybe it'll be bad, whatever it is, it's gonna take them by surprise and hopefully be entertaining for yourself. So if you wanna help fill that up and cause a kerfuffle, uh, that'll be exclamation mark support. Uh, and, uh, okay, with all of that in mind, your very nervous GM uh, is going to begin <laughs> uh, her little GM set. She takes a lucky sip from her lucky Legolas cup, of course. Uh, uh, uh. Of course. Okay, lovely. Cheers. Wonderful. Cheers. Yes, yeah, so everyone take in. a sip, take a drink, take a moment. Um, and I will be taking you back to the 1920s in England, the 1920s with some artistic liberties in terms of I don't know everything about the 1920s in England. I'm sure you can forgive me that. Um, but we will be in the south of England. The south of England that all English know only really exists in fiction of the past. Rainless clouds of pure white dotting an ever blue sky, wildflowers blooming everywhere. Just pastoral perfection. We watch as a paper boy whistles his way down a country lane on his bicycle, newspaper bag strapped tightly to his side and his black curls safely squished under a flat cap. The lane isn't too far out of the nearby village of Clarebrook, but enough so that anybody living along the lane would be afforded privacy, and enough that the paper boy's face is a pinch red with exertion. He cycles past two large brick pillars that mark the entrance to an estate. In wrought silver curved above are the words, Clarebrook Estate. Onwards he goes, past an ornamental lake, which from a bird's eye view could pass the shape of a swan. Within the body of a swan, of this one, accessible by a small bridge is a pagoda, which 
quite messes up the silhouette of the lake, but we will learn that the residents of the estate are more concerned with being able to say that they have a swan lake than the functionality of the thing. The residents of the estate are Sir Richard Fairfield and his wife Margot Clyde, and it's where all of you, bar one, have been staying as guests for the weekend. Um, the newsbit boy stops short of the main entrance of the house, instead leaning his bicycle against its yellow, yellow brick and running down a small set of steps to knock on the door to the side. A maid opens the door, scolds him, and gives him a penny for the eight newspapers that he hands her. We follow the maid as she walks through the servants' quarters into the kitchen. There's a long table by the door where, you know, prepared things go when they need to be taken upstairs, meals when they're done, that kind of thing. And there are seven breakfast trays waiting there. We watch her deftly place a newspaper on each empty breakfast tray before brushing her hands upon her apron as if to wipe away the smell of a service worker and turning around. Well, Mrs. Maiden, she says, I've heard that nuns wake up even earlier than us. That makes it now and now. She's still not wrong for breakfast. She gestures to a set of bells on the wall that are marked like guest bedroom one, guest bedroom two, and that sort of thing. And Hannah, would you like to describe your character to us? Um, so Clarice Maiden stands there. She is in her late 40s. Um, she would like to say she doesn't look it, but she probably does. She is quite fine lined skin. She has brown hair that is going gray with also deep brown eyes. Um, she is fairly short and stout, uh, wears an apron uh, most of the time. And uh, yeah, that's, that is her. And also she has two character traits, which are public to everybody and it's part of the system. Would you like to let us know what those character traits are? Uh, her character traits are ambitious and arrogant. <laughs> lovely, lovely woman. Um, Very nice. And <laughs> Uh, standing in the kitchen there with you is Claire, one of the maids. Um, and she is basically, she's one of those people that thinks that she's more familiar with you than she actually is, which is pretty much generally the attitude that Clarice takes with all of the staff as far as I'm aware, because Clarice kind of sees herself as a bit of I, everyone, right? I'm, I'm the boss lady. I, she's the boss lady. I quite simply run this kitchen. I, I maybe don't run all of the halls, but I do deserve to, so mm. I'll try uh, my best. And uh, as Claire's brushing off her apron, she says, so do you have any particular holy breakfast, anything special prepared for the nun, or? Well, um, we have cock cross buns, of course, um, just in case they want something special. Um, but as usual, it is the English breakfast. We have eggs, we have bacon, hams, anything they might want. Hey, all right. I'm thinking I'll go up even if she doesn't ring the bell. I'm getting nervous and I really don't want to. Well, get well, that again, they right? do know best. So maybe don't go up before the bell rings. Hey, it's true. Did you see Mr. Smith? And Mr. Smith is basically the, uh, the Mr. Bates of the house where he's like the valet and he's just been pottering around the servants' quarters. He's been he's been spending the better part of the morning writing something. You know, I think he takes too many liberties with his duty. I think his lordship just takes pity on a fellow veteran and it's infantilizing it is. He's been I, he's been writing things. He's got ink all over his hands. I wanna oh. have to maybe clean that off in time to dress his lordship. Oh, well um um excuse me, excuse me, and I like try catch the attention. Okay, uh, oh, no. <laughs> Mr. Smith is like kind of like you can just see like the bat, like the hunch of him, like around the door, and he's like stands up really straight suddenly. He's like, uh, <clears throat> Yes, Mrs. Maiden. Well, you better clean that mess off immediately. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Maiden. Very sorry. Do you have, um, uh, that's that's all right. Yes, sorry. Do um, I have cleaning supplies? Do I have water? What do you need? No, it's fine. Over to the sink. In the quarters, ma'am. Quickly. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go and get it. And this, like, very tall, like, fairly, like, broad man is just, like, hunched over as we're speaking to him. And he, like, shuffles off. He's like, yeah, no problem at all, ma'am. Kind of, like, he fills with the breakfast trays, like, make sure they're all straight and stuff. And he's like, yeah, I'm totally doing work and stuff. And it's like, scoots off. Um, and we sort of, <laughs> Claire leaves the kitchen. Um, and what would you do um, for the next, if you do a little vignette for us, for the next, like, hour or two of your day, what would you do? Uh, a lot of the day is probably spent speaking in an overly posh accent, uh, trying to boss the other uh, servants around, telling them what the master of the house would best want because she knows him oh so well. And um, well, like her standing in front of a mirror, just like, <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, 
Oh. <laughs> well, that is what one would do. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, one amazing uh, and then she'd probably start working on canapes and um all the uh meals that will be served at lunch the dishes um in the and the different stuff that will be prepared and probably um so in the house there's a housekeeper who is technically in charge of all of the female side of the mm -hmm. work a force uh she would probably try step into the uh, house servant's uh, shoes as much as possible. Like a and... salary maid messes up and you reprimand oh, her. Oh, absolutely. The the house of course. Like, That's fine. I can do that. No, don't worry. I've got it. I've, I, I can deal with this. Um, she basically wants to be the lady of the house, probably. Uh... Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's totally fine and harmless anyway. Um, so we sort of pan upwards into the rest of the house. We pass through the ground floor, which is full of just, you know, absolute pristine diamond white, not diamond shaped rather, not the diamond across the floors, uh, diamond shaped tile and it's black and white and that sort of thing. And we rise up and we go into one of the guest bedrooms, which has, uh, it's quite a size, but it's one of the nice guest bedrooms actually. It has like an ensuite and a dressing room and everything. Um, and that is Sister Maria's room. And Sister Maria has risen quite early because she is, of course, Lady of the Church. And would you like to describe your character, Sister Maria? Nova. Uh, Sister Maria is uh, a age um, <laughs> and old has enough devoted, to know the Lord well. Old enough to know the Lord. Uh, she has married herself off to Jesus Christ um, and takes her position very seriously in the church. Uh, is very devoted to uh, raising funds for charity um, and uh, charitable causes in the church, uh, takes it extremely seriously. Um, one might say that she is detail focused. Uh, with that might that be endeavor. one of her character traits that's down, <laughs> <Yes>. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and, and may come off as a little arrogant sometimes because she is very successful in her charitable ambitions, um, and may, uh, twist arms of, uh, uh of certain, uh, film directors and, uh, industrialists and such, certain people of means, uh, she may convince to give money to, um, success, mostly successfully, we might, we might see, uh, amen. Is she um, the sort to, like... What's the word? I don't know how to pronounce it. Proselytize or whatever, where it's like, does she try and like force her religion on others or does she mostly just care about getting the money for the charity from That them? was a million dollar word right there. Um, God bless you. Love. And um, she, uh, <laughs> she may... Um, she absolutely believes that the Jesus Christ um, is uh, our one and true savior, uh, and all other religions are, uh, you know, um, misled, misguided, perhaps. Uh, and if you do not follow the letter of the Bible, um, you uh, you may be a, a whore, uh, for, to, for lack of a better word. Um, and the narrative uh, will heavily punish any such slut-shaming, of course. <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, we'll see about that. The Lord is on my side. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I'll get my way over the narrative. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and... Um, and she does rise early in the morning with the sun um, to uh, do a solid uh, four hours of prayer in the morning, um, <laughs> followed with only gruel because uh, <laughs> I specifically only consume what um, happens the bare is, minimum. Uh, one of the maids actually knocks on your door like around the time that you would be awake. So I think you haven't rung your bell food, but they're getting nervous. So this really sweet maid knocks on your door and she brings you like a full English breakfast on a tray. And she's like, uh, sister, we have um, breakfast for yourself if you'd be willing to take it. And she holds up this like gorgeous meal, like just stunning. Jesus Christ, I am so sorry that this insolent woman has interrupted my prayers to you. I hope you do take kindly upon my patron. I'm saying words now. Patronage <laughs> to you, sir, and I do love you. Uh, doth saith the Lord. Amen. Excuse uh, me, I'm in the middle of something. Can you please not understand that? I, uh, uh, uh who are you? What are you doing? What is all, what uh, is this bounty you have brought me? Oh, uh, you realize uh, that I am one person. You realize that I only need a few calories a day. Where, uh, I, mean, have, I could pick off two of the tomatoes for you if you'd like, Mom. My name's Amy. Tomatoes? I, I go to church every Sunday. You put tomatoes? 
I it's not s- even summer <laughs> and you got tomatoes excuse I'm, me well, his lordship thought that this guest would appreciate you know that they're, they're they're not in season but the chef's very good you do understand that people are starving right kimberly there Amy, there are people that are Amy. dying <laughs> excuse me uh, if you want, Mum, I'll just, I'll just. Do you, do you want some water? I can bring you some water, or if there's some other sort of. Fine, just leave it, leave it, and go. Uh, oh, and she's all like, like can't tell if you meant to like take the food. I'm just like, okay, and she like leave puts the, the breakfast tray, tray and, and just leave. goes. <laughs> she's gone. She's down the stairs. She's a shot. And as soon as the door closes, I'm like, oh, thank God, no food. Oh, thank God, I haven't eaten a cherry in so long. Sugar. Do you eat any of the food? Do you just leave it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you eat like the whole thing. <laughs> I eat the whole thing. Okay. And then for the rest she of your day. Wasteful, you doesn't want to be wasteful, right? Yeah. Exactly. Don't want to be wasteful. <laughs> and for the rest of the, uh, for the morning, would you just be praying and just staying in your room? Oh kind yeah. Of thing? Uh, praying and, uh, and, uh, saying thanks to the Lord for the bountiful meal that I ate purely so that it didn't go to waste. I did not enjoy any bit of it. Um, according to the lord of course. um and uh yeah praying and then perhaps going over ledgers and other planning duties for the charitable causes and such okay. so uh the the door opens because the person opening the door knows that you wouldn't respond well to a knock uh mm-hmm. and father thomas comes in and father thomas is the vicar of the church and the convent attached convent that you're a part of and he's been escorting you to the estate because it would be scandalous for a nun to go by herself. Um, he's like a relatively tall man. Uh, he's got olive skin and dark hair that's graying very slightly at the temples. And he's got incredibly kind, uh, dark eyes. Um, and he's he keeps you at an arm's length, but does really want the best for you in general. And as he opens the door, kind of like he nudges the breakfast tray because you didn't move it from the door. You sort of like ate it where it was. And he's like nudging it. He's like, oh, uh, Sister Maria, did they not take away yesterday morning's breakfast tray? Uh, uh, you know what? The, the, the stupid maid, Kimberly, I believe she said her name was, uh, was, ju- oh God, you know, I'm sure I'm, that she does not attend church. I've never seen her in the pews. And you know, Christ has always had a heart for the workers, Maria. Oh, well, he never met her. <laughs> <laughs> this woman. Ah. <laughs> uh. And I'm sure he uh, has never met you either. And yet he loves you still. Um, I would just like to let you know that Margot's informed us that at noon we'll be having the, we'll be having champagne. If you would like me to request with the kitchens for you to have juice instead or something more to your liking, I was about to head down there now. Water, of course. Water is the only thing I shall consume. You know, people are dying out there and starving. Right. So, and he, he like um, glances an eye to like the empty cup of tea that's like on the breakfast tray. He's like water, yeah. And then he just like closes the door. Um, and then who would be of the three remaining beauties that I have before me? Who do you think would be waking up next? I think I have a feeling, but no, Catherine's honk shoe. She's lying in all day. I imagine she's up at like two in the afternoon. But I, I would be get up- out of bed for less than ten thousand dollars a day. <laughs> <laughs> Stunning. Yes. Would Joe would Joe be up and about? Is she the is, Yeah, I think yeah. Joe might be up and about. You know, I've got to get up and get my exercise in and do my breaths. Ha ha ha. Absolutely. <laughs> and would you like to describe Whatever your character to us and explain sure. why they are so up and at him? You know, sometimes you got to be up and at him because the early bird catches the worm. Hey there, I'm Josephine, also known as Joe Widener. The industrialist, I happen to be an American steel. You know, nothing wrong with that. Just lots and lots of steel. Stealing things. Um, wages, maybe. stealing wages, capitalism. <laughs> what, what do you mean? I just need them worker bees to work. Um, <laughs> I might be known as ambitious and big dictive, but who knows? Um, I have a hobby for racing horses and collecting lots of works of art. Sometimes, you know, people are intimidated by me uh, because my family has so much and some people have so little, especially during this time. But it's, you know, all for the best. Um, actually, I have fantastic news for you. I do apologize. Your traits yeah. are actually assertive and protective. So. I thought so. I was like, yeah. I might No, you're mean? okay. That's okay, fine. Great, great, great. 
I'm assertive and protective. I lied. That's my fault. I'm, I'm also ambitious inside, though. Yeah, but I'm also very protective of my friends and of my business. Um, I'm a lady person, human of probably about 30. Um, but I think uh, I like to uh, dress across the divide mostly because I deal with a lot of men in my industry. And I like to uh, make sure that I'm heard at all times. Hmm? Very important. It's very important in your very industry. Very important. Very Absolutely. important. Absolutely. Um, and have you, so you've been staying in uh, the room for about like a couple of days now and it's your standard like English country room with like cream wallpaper, like faded green curtains, like a four poster bed, that kind of thing. Have you made any changes to the room? Is it particularly messy, particularly neat? Have you had anything ordered in? Oh, I've definitely ordered whatever I could from this household uh whatever was able to, to be brought in i am practicing yogi at the moment it's a very oh. new bangled thing um uh some eastern religions and practices i've been doing some meditation uh i've got a new teacher that's been teaching me all the new the new things oh i love that have you had like have you ordered like a mat of any kind or you've like made a oh, yeah. space for it i, I made like bed. a little a little altar and i have a little space to do my morning meditation as well um, just to, you know, to make sure that I'm connecting with myself because I am the one that creates my life. Absolutely. And uh, there's a knock at your door as well, um, because at some point after your yogi and that sort of thing, you had rung the bell for breakfast mm -hmm. and let everyone know that you're awake. And Amy, who's shaking a little bit because she is just terrified of opening the door to another just religious zealot, um, is just sort of pokes her head through and is like, um, sorry, uh, mom, I've, I've got your breakfast if you'd like. Oh, namaste. Were you able to get that lotus juice I asked about? Um, no, mom. We do have aloe vera juice, if you'd like that. Perfect. Can we do that? A little dash of cinnamon. That should just do it well. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yes. Um, is, is this all right then? And then she, she hands you what you'd like custom ordered for breakfast. And what mm -hmm. did you custom order for your breakfasts? I custom ordered three slices of tomato because, you know, why not? live wild and free summer, but <laughs> i know i know just something i'm accustomed to um i ordered um a coffee because i'm american <laughs> and i needed a coffee <laughs> she did her best it's probably not going to be exactly how i want it but sh i'm sure she did her best to get it done the chef's um, very good <laughs> oh yes absolutely um i also ordered um a couple of pieces of bacon because well even though i'm trying to be more vegetarian in my in my life because of practicing yogi now still that's the one that gets me every time i try and try to quit but it happens <laughs> um and then i had um a, a bowl of some granola and some mixed berries stunning i love it it's beautiful all right um and she sort of she leaves you the breakfast uh and closes the door and then uh finally we have virginia's uh virginia hughes uh, and would you like to introduce your character as well, yes. Krista? Virginia, she is an archaeologist. She's like in her early 30s, you know, she kind of a baddie, you know, she, she does her thing, but she's focused on her work. She's very ambitious. Um, she wants to be the top female archaeologist out there she wants to get everything done she wants to be in the papers she wants to be known worldwide and you know she's single um some may say she's a bachelorette but she really holds her heart close to herself uh she could be very vindictive and um you know she can get a little bit snippy at people uh so beware good luck Oh, okay. Uh, and so your breakfast tray uh, arrives the same, Amy. So it just like comes in. Um, she puts the breakfast tray down, has the newspaper on it. And when you lift up the newspaper, an envelope falls out and it's just labeled Ginny, just in like very like curved writing. Do you open mm -hmm. the envelope? Do you leave it for a sec? What do you do? Uh, has Kate walked out the room? Or is she still oh, there? yeah, she's gone. She's like, she's, she's like gone. exited. Yeah. Okay, then I pick it up and I look at it. I sigh and I go sit down and I start to open it. I sigh again. And then I decide to put it down for a minute before I start reading it. Cause I need a, need a breath. I need a little breather. Mm -hmm. a little breather. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to read your letter to you? Chris? Oh yes, please. Okay. Read my letter. So your letter says, my love, I must thank you as I always do for detailing your most recent expedition to me. 
Tales of your travels through Russia would fetch you a pound a page if published, yet you regale me with them at no cost. You are ever a woman of tenacity and brilliant mind, and our friend Sir Richard best be honored to receive you. And then in brackets it says, I request that you not mention me to him, as I owe him a debt I have yet repaid. And then in brackets. I am sorry I have not written as of late, though I have been distant in word. As always, my love for you is a wind that I sail perilously close to. I cannot write much. Opportunity for, ver for verbosity escapes me at the moment due to circumstance. I know that I have always been unclear to you as to the circumstance that I am in. And again, I remind you how inappropriate it is for us to wed while I remain so chained. I can only say that I love you more than I know what to do with. Forgive me for needing to leave it at that. P.S. It occurs to me that the term I has been used a shameful amount here. Reprimand me for my behavior at your liberty. Your own adoring, Joseph. And also you note that the envelope just says Ginny. It doesn't say like Ginny and the address. It's just got like your name on it. And it's just made its way to your breakfast tray somehow. Mm -hmm. um, so once you've read your letter, what would you be doing with your day? And how would you be reacting? Well, I will be blushing. Obviously, that was a beautiful letter. Um, Joseph really knows how to write. Um, and then I would go to my suitcase and retrieve a box that I have full of other letters and put it in with that one and tuck it away under a shirt. And then I would eat my breakfast while reading the newspaper, hoping that there's something about me in it. <laughs> I love that. That's stunning. <laughs> um, okay, so we've finished the opening scenes. We've introduced all of the characters. Fantastic intros, everybody. Thank you. Um, and also, chat, thank you for the support so far. You're so kind. So now, um, on a meta level, just as ourselves, we need to establish connections because in this game, connections are basically every character can give out a connection to another character. And once they've done that, they will know each other's motive and circumstance. Their circumstance is a secret. They don't know what they don't want other people to know about. And their motive is their motive for murdering the person who's going to get murdered later. Um, connections can be things like familial, they can be friendship, they can be colleagues, they can just be that you're a fan of their work, it can be anything. And several people can have, uh, sorry, one person can have several people being connected to them, but everyone can just give out one connection. So um, with that in mind, does anybody have another character who they would like to give their connection to? It's just, people. <laughs> just quickly, Harley, my love. Yes. Did we introduce Catherine? Catherine? Oh Next. my goodness, we didn't. She slept in and I completely <laughs> forgot about her. From my, I was like, so cool. I was like, oh my God, opening scenes are done. Perfect, jamming, incredible. I'm so sorry, Next. It's because my brain was telling me to leave Krista until last because she's new. And I just, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's totally fine. You're all right. Catherine, late, latest riser. Um, the sun is high in the sky. How does Catherine spend her morning? Catherine wakes up in bed and does a big stretch and just leans back into the pillows and just sinks into the duvet and admires the, the smells and the sounds of being in a new environment without getting up and just stays in bed. Beautiful. I love that. Do you ring the bell for breakfast? It's it's super like within arms reach. You don't even like leave your yes. bed and do it. Yes, she does. Okay. okay. And uh fairly promptly afterwards, like two or three minutes afterwards, um, there's a knock at the door. And again, it's Amy coming in with uh, a breakfast tray. Did you order a specific breakfast because you're American? Or are you having the standard English breakfast thing? Uh Catherine would have asked, she would have informed them that she wants everything to be very light. Mm -hmm. um, nothing too heavy for her. She needs lots of energy through the day. Lots of like fresh whole fruits and vegetables. Okay. Um, but she's very excited to see what kind of cooking they have here. So she requested to be surprised, um, but to still stick to a healthy meal. Okay. Yeah. And there's like a like fruit salad kind of situation. And then a couple of like you know, like the roasted tomatoes and that kind of thing and some beans. And then there's like an English breakfast tea and there's also a cup of coffee as well and like a milk pitcher. There's like way too much stuff on the tray. They're like trying way too hard here. Um, And Amy's like delicately like bringing it in and you're still on the bed. So she's like, uh, would you like me to, Um, I can get one of the, the, the bed trays if you like. What's your name again, darling? Uh, my name's Amy. Amy, have a seat, come here. How do you take your tea, Amy? Oh, um... I mean, when I have occasion to drink it, Mom, I, I take it with uh, just a, a titch of milk and, and a sugar. Wonderful. If you could get that started there. And um, of of the foods present, is there anything you recommend starting with? Is there anything? Ooh, and she's going to kind of pick up 
some fresh fruit from the fruit salad and she's gonna go ah and she's gonna hold it out to amy like for amy to like eat out of her hand uh amy like just really slowly like comes and like waiting for you to pull it away and then just like bites into the fruit how good is that Mm. very good mom i i don't think i've had one in a while actually incredible um did you finish doing the tea oh yes yes here and then she like holds it out to you that's for you darling i have my coffee please sit now tell me give me the rundown um this estate uh how long have you worked here um well i'm 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 19 in november and i've worked here about five years now Oh, wonderful, darling. My name is Catherine. Now you look at me, Amy. You have a friend in Catherine. Am I right? Yes. Yes, Mom. Yes. Right. We're going to be friends now. Would you like anything else? Um, and she's like staring at this thing of like the grapes. And then she's like, no, no, that, that's quite all right. Um, I'm, I'm all right with my tea. Well, they won't bite you, darling. Have a grape. What are you doing just looking at them? Um, all right, I suppose. And then she, like, plucks, like, one grape, like, the smallest grape off the vine thing, and then just, like, eats it. And she's, like, she, like, takes way too long to eat a grape than a normal person would take to eat a grape, because she's, like, savoring it. Um, uh, thank you, Mom. You've, you've been quite kind to me every, every morning that you've been here. Amy, uh, be a dear. In the cupboard over there, would you mind selecting a dress for me? Just whatever you think's fitting for today's festivities. Oh, uh, uh, all right, and she sort of opens the wardrobe. And what kind of dresses have you got in there at the minute? Uh, Catherine has a wardrobe that is for for such a brief trip. You would think that she was moving here. You know, she has an outfit for not only every type of weather that they might encounter, but every color palette she might want within each type of clothes appropriate for the weather. It's like rainbow, like ordered, and then also in terms of like heaviness per color and that kind of thing. Yeah, and like Stunning. length and, and the style of accessories that would go with it. And she's just kind of like laying back in the bed. You can see she's kind of checking her nails. She's eating just little kind of like picking at the food and she's going whatever you think would look best darling just pick something out please i do not have the time to think about it today oh uh all right um well if if you don't mind my saying um i i think that the the blue would go well because her ladyship is wearing yellow and she but her her favorite color is cornflower blue so you'd you'd quite impress her if you wore um a, a blue dress Marvelous, Amy. Now, take anything else you'd like and be on your way. Thank you so much. You have just been a peach. Thank you, Mom. And she's, like, so happy. And she's, like, skitters out of the room. She's, like, trying not to walk too fast from, like, energetic, like, happiness. But she just, like, scoots out of the room. She's, like, taking her tea with her as well. And, like, the saucer that it's on as well. Um, And now we would be doing the connections. I am so sorry for skipping over you, Negs. That is my ADHD brain at work. You're fine. Your front standing. So yeah, with the connections thing in mind, would any players like to form connections? I just want a connection. I probably would have reached out to at least one of you rich people to try to get you to donate money to the church. So would anyone like to be does anyone mm-hmm. want to give money? <laughs> Either money give, give money or have had ha- had a difficult conversation with me in the past where I tried we to get We might have had a difficult <laughs> conversation. <laughs> okay, Joe. You see, I'm giving all my money to an ashram in India at the moment. Mm. Okay, yeah. I'm so, so sorry, it's all tied up. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I um, call it enlightenment, and you're calling it witchcraft. Now, mm-hmm. I say... <laughs> okay, so... If I do say so! Oh, no, not that. that. that the All world, right, you so... know, if, if everyone had their hand on an elephant, you know, and they're from different places around the world, and everyone thinks, you know, someone to describe it like, oh, it's tough and strong, and that's like the one of the parts of the elephant. The other person goes, oh, it's like malleable, and that's someone holding onto the trunk. And, you know, someone holds on, and they go, oh, it's so fuzzy and fun and fluffy, and that's someone holding on to some other portion of an elephant. I'm not quite sure of all the portions of the elephant. But we all have different views of it, and we all think we know the whole thing, but we don't, is what I'm saying, is that it's bigger than all of us. We don't all have the answers. 
I appreciate your thoughtfulness in asking my support, but at this time, my money is tied up elsewhere. Okay, so it would be a shame if uh, if that information ever came to light that you were giving all of your money to the uh, Eastern. I did not say of the world. all of it. I said <laughs> a certain portion of it was tied up. And it I would be very interesting be... if your stockholders, who uh, all I'm sure are part of the church, um, found out that you were just so cheap <coughs> and unwilling to are give a generous donation to poor people. Okay, well, and, we'll, get uh... we'll get to the blackmail. We'll get to the blackmail. Okay. I'm so sure. That was, our conver- but... that was our previous conversation. That's okay. our connection. That's beautiful. Previously so on, we could lie. Previously on. Okay, so we have Nova and Terry as a connection. So I will DM both of you the other person's motive and the circumstance, but I will be relatively vague about it, but you'll have an insight into their character. Um, and Krista, I saw you also raise your hand uh, when Nova was asking people, do you also yeah. want a connection with Maria or do you have an idea? I was going to say or? maybe like a missions trip. Uh, okay. Sister Maria was in a missions trip and let's say Brazil. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was, you know, there working as I do because um, mm-hmm. I'm a working woman. And mm-hmm. uh, she came up to me asking for donations. I told her I don't have time for her. And, um, she, you know, she does her spiel and I kind of just brush her off like whatever type of deal. Like I got other yeah. things to do. Yeah, okay, and you believe in um, myths and fabricated bones uh, that were created by naysayers. So you know what? I don't even want your money. Take that. Well, you were going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me just uh, add up those motives for you. Given Maria a lot of uh, gunpowder here, I support yeah, it. Yeah, does, does Maria want anyone other than God to love her? Because... <laughs> Ooh. Damn. Oh, no. Do I Damn. Need anyone else's love is the real question you should ask. Ooh, okay. No. I have my Lord and I know he is with me. <laughs> um, um, okay. 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 Oh, yeah, Hannah. I feel like maybe Mar- like um, Clarice has probably sent food to potentially uh, Maria's like God, you convents so but power. if that's too much power no, then it's fine if no, that's not fine. the case I, I enjoy it because she's the quote-unquote most innocent of them and just has all of the tea on everybody <laughs> um, so not quote, unquote, what was I am. what was your idea uh hannah that clarice has sent money maybe for food from the kitchens to the yeah place. maybe they're on like a friendly oh, okay. we're, 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 we're okay with each other okay, okay. i yeah, we're we're good. You okay. Food drives and and gave food oh, to the of, poor. Of course, I love that. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Let me add that as well. Uh, and Negs, would you like to give your connection to somebody? Yes, I think I would have a connection with Ginny. I think Ginny may have been a consultant for a film that I did about like a fast-paced archaeologist adventurer, mm-hmm. and we. Uh, connected because I needed notes on if, you know, the script was accurate, uh, what it would actually be like. And mm-hmm. so I think we've probably never met before, but just corresponded. And maybe we had that connection uh, for the sake of a film. And and now we're going to get to meet for the first time. Oh, OK. okay. Love that. Um, so let me see. So that means that Ginny would know both Maria's stuff uh, and also would know uh, Catherine's stuff. Okay. We said a lot. Oh boy, oh boy. Um, so Terry, you, uh, so Nova gave you her connection. Um, who do you want to give your connection to? Ooh, I was going to give mine to um, Catherine. Um, thinking that I maybe, like, in the past had helped funded a film that she worked on. Because, you know, everybody throws a little money here and there, like a little bit to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry I didn't give any to you, Sister Maria, but I'm going to give some to Hollywood. That's where the real, that's where the money really is. That's That's the real influence. The real influence. America. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. This is the way of the future. Um, Propaganda. (laughs) Does anybody have a connection card that I've missed? Um, has anyone not given out a connection that they can think of? No, we're all good. Um, okay. Because you, so yeah, Hannah gave hers out, Terry gave hers out, Krista, you gave yours out. Yeah, okay, everyone's given those out, cool. Um, so I will DM everybody the stuff behind the scenes during the break, just because 
everybody knows everybody and I will die otherwise. So just during the break, I'll tell you, it's not super relevant. The motive and the circumstance aren't super rele relevant for this episode anyway, but just as a, as a heads up for that. So um, we have had the opening scenes. We have had the scandalous little connections put together and that kind of thing. And now it is time for us to move to what your host Margot, Margot Clyde, the wife of the man who owns the estate, uh, likes to call midday refreshments. So basically what happens is everybody is, and you know this is happening, so you've all, you don't summon downstairs, you're just expected to come downstairs at noon, where in the drawing room, Margot's, um, she seated herself on a chaise lounge and she's got a bunch of uh, sort of orange tinted champagne all along the coffee table, little hors d'oeuvres everywhere. There's like a footman and a maid standing in the room just holding trays of more of that stuff in case you wanted to get it at height for whatever reason. Um, and so Margot is, let me describe you. Margot. Margot is the wife of Sir Richard, of course, and she is an opera singer from America. She's what you would call a classical beauty. She has like a high forehead, soft jaw, slender nose, very Tudor miniature look. Um, she has light freckles all around her face because she spends a lot of time in the sun. Um, and she is, she tries to emulate being the sun put upon the ground. She has blonde waves cut into a girlish bob. Uh, she has a bright yellow shift dress on with like a Peter Pan collar, a slight little gap here for like a ribbon to be tied into a bow, and then a match thick yellow belt that's tied into a bow at the side um and so which of you would like to enter the room first with Margot, or any of you late or anything like that i'm definitely late <laughs> Catherine, i'm punctual. just gonna put it out there now I, i'm just gonna be so late i'm punctual i will come in Oh, Sister Maria, I am so glad that you are here. We do have, um, I, I hope that you don't mind, I did put the water in a champagne flute for yourself. It's just the aesthetic. I didn't want to, you know, spoil it. Um, but I do have your water here, and there's a tray of water in champagne. There's, like, a little lemon and, like, lime and, like, strawberries you put inside the water. Oh, that is very kind. You know, you didn't have to go through all that trouble for me, Margot. I would have simply accepted to drink it from the faucet itself, but that was very kind of you to give me oh, a vessel. My, I would not want to put yourself in such a compromising position, Sister Maria. Absolutely not. No, oh. and uh, trust me, it was no trouble at all. Uh, you know, Jerry, he was very kind with, with the water, weren't you, Jerry? And the footman just like, curtly nods his head um and so margot just like pats the seat next to her maria you gonna sit down next to her you gonna sit on a different chair oh if you if you insist i'll i'll sit next to you of course okay um and who who enters next oh i'll be coming on in through those doors oh champagne i don't mind if i do cheers <gasps> to you Joe, hello, please, yeah, uh, yes. indeed. And she was about to like, please help yourself to champagne, but you've obviously already like taken one already. Oh, this um, is great. How are you doing there, Margo? Uh, uh, very well, thank you, Joe. Uh, how did you rest? Did you rest better than, than the previous evening? I know you rose quite earlier yesterday and I was concerned. Oh, no, I rose early again today too. No, it's not the room, it's not the space. Just got a lot in my mind and a lot to get done. Oh. So I try to use and maximize my time and space. So I do some meditation, some visualization, thinking about how I can overtake another piece of industry today. You know, I have never met a woman who puts so much effort into relaxation as yourself, but it does seem to work for a person such as yourself. And that's a lot of work I... to relax. It's a lot of work. I, I, I believe it to be true when I look upon you. Uh, and you then... know, maybe you mm -hmm. would, uh, maybe it would be easier for you to relax if you're, uh, soul was in a little bit of a better place you know uh perhaps you should spend more time praying uh than you are oh, my soul um, is at ease and i am ascending to a place called nirvana you know i must say sister maria i do not pray near as much as i should i cannot imagine spending so much time on my knees for so little pleasure you know i just i don't understand how you do it Oh, I get plenty of pleasure from it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, the, the Lord is my husband, and I do love him dearly. <laughs> Sounds hot. And that may not be something that you're familiar with, Josephine. Unmarried, oh, still, Oh, no, I've yes. definitely had some religious experiences mine through my lifetime. That's for sure. I mean, and Margaret's not like, puts her hands on her thighs. She's like, I mean, I suppose that the Lord is more present than my husband, who has decided to spend his morning in the study doing his papers. Unbelievable. Uh, Jerry, where are the other guests? Would you be able to summon them if they're, if they're there? I mean, did I not tell everybody that noon is, is midday refreshments? 
Oh. And now she's waiting. She's like, she will just like not engage with anybody until anyone else comes in because she's very anxious to get another, please. The... Another. Um, Clarice another. is not necessarily meant to be the person upstairs serving the food, but boy, she's gonna try. So uh, she comes in with like two more. Like there are some canapes maybe already out, but she comes in with two extra tray, uh, two extra trays very up. Uh, Promptly. <laughs> oh, great, thank you so much. You know, we have one of the finest chefs in the country here. Uh, what what did you have today for us, Clarice? Oh, well, uh, Margot, this is, so, these are miniature Yorkshire puddings with a little bit of beef and a, just, a, just a touch of horseradish on top of them. So uh, that's some- favorite. Oh, of course, I know everyone's delicious. favorite. <laughs> and I'm just gonna- well, normally I, I put it out for the guests to go up and don't they don't well, take it off jo, the plate. Joe herself is a guest, clearly, clearly. Joe herself is a guest, so you know, don't it's, it's, it's all right. Just 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 let her do it. Would you? Would you? Uh, did, did you see? Did you see? Uh, uh, oh my goodness, what was it? Geneva, Virginia. Did you see Virginia or Catherine on your way? And I do I do want to introduce everybody to everyone. Oh no, I ha I hope the guests aren't being late. That would be. Oh no, this. Yeah, these would not be as good when they're a little cold. These are real nice right now, warm and perfect and flaky. Delicious. Oh, why, thank you. Of course, everyone always loves my. This exchange, I walk in and I look around and I see everybody and I see Maria and I'm like, oh. <laughs> and then <laughs> I see you, Margo. <laughs> and I'm like, I walk up to you because you're a familiar face. And I say oh. hello. Jenny, hello. How I'm, I'm so sorry, Virginia. I apologize. I knew a Jenny in my school years. My school years. I know you don't like being called Jenny, darling. Uh, Virginia, yes. it's so good to see you. I am so excited to introduce you to everybody. You know, you've all been here for the weekend. Uh, uh, I think yeah. we haven't all been in the same room together. How no did you sleep? Oh, good, good. The pillow's a bit stiff. Um, oh, yeah, you know, I can so have Amy go on fluff them. Absolutely. Thank Clarice, you. Would you tell well, go on fluff them when you can? I mean, those pillows are the highest quality but indeed but they are uh, mm -hmm. the highest quality stiff pillows that we seem to have mm -hmm. it's perfectly all yeah, right yeah they're not like american fluffy pillows yeah american. i have to agree with joe <laughs> oh you all are so impoverished oh your lives are so difficult aren't they that you cannot simply have a pillow that is too thick and too stiff must be a very hard life that you the amount of money need. they probably paid for those pillows i guarantee you they should be a lot softer Oh, did you pay for them? It's impolite to discuss the house's money, everyone. Um, could, uh, Maria, would you like a, a canapé of some kind? Maria? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm sure you were thinking about the Lord. It's <laughs> Sorry. I was just overcome with thoughts of how great the Lord was. What was Pause. that? Would you like a canapé of some kind? Oh, uh, I'm fasting. I'm fine. Oh, if, of course. <laughs> Fasting, huh? Yes. Sure. Uh, uh, between the hours of breakfast and evening, I uh, I do not take part in um, in over engorging myself. Oh, so with you didn't have any of those tomatoes that we had oh, we had this morning sent up to our rooms? No, absolutely mm, okay. not. And uh, uh, Megs, what is what is Catherine currently doing? Uh, at this moment, I think you would see Catherine walking in with her hand on Amy's back and you can hear her, you know, she's kind of guiding her from the small of her back and she's going, I'm just saying, darling, a pop of red really bring out the color of your cheeks. You have such beautiful cheekbones. Learn to show them off. <gasps> Margot, dear, darling. Catherine, darling. And she like just rises up immediately in this huge swishing motion to like embrace you. Like, mwah, mwah, and you cheek Margie, sort of dear, thing. the home, beautiful. The drapes, immaculate. The artwork, oh, exquisite. Impeccable taste, impeccable style. Margot to a T. It is so good to see you. Thank you. You know, I can indeed take full credit for the appearance because Richard, in all his kindness, allowed me to design the home as I please and entertain all the fine guests that I please. And I'm pleased to have your 
pleasing self here. So thank you so much. I am so flattered here. I simply must introduce you to the rest of the, to the, to the party, you know, because I mean, I feel I've been, I was saying that you've all been here for the weekend and I believe we've all been in the same room at once. So I, I would just like for us to all chat and be girls. You can sit next to me, of course. Don't worry, Don. If any of them bore you too much, just talk to me. How does thank that sound? You, dear. Hello, everyone. I am Catherine and she's going to walk right up to Joe and she's going to put her hand out. Charmed, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, Josephine, nice to meet you. Catherine, it is. I've funded one of your films before. Do you not remember? Joe, mm -hmm. is that really you? You look fantastic. Wonderful to see you, dear. And how have you been? I'm doing all right, thank you. Just practicing oh, new wonderful. things. Wonderful. Oh, couldn't be happier to see you. And, uh, and she's going to turn to Sister Maria. Uh... I'm Catherine. Hello, Catherine. Um, it seems you have forgotten to get dressed today. <laughs> What's Catherine wearing next? Catherine's wearing uh, a very striking piece, sort of similar to what I have on right now, um, with a slightly higher neck, but a lot of jewelry. And she does have like a, a big fluffy stole that she's wearing. She has a lot of like pearl bracelets and like hand coverings and rings. And uh, she's wearing the, the blue dress that Amy picked out. And literally Margaret, Margot's dress is like more revealing and like loose than Catherine's is. But uh... not all of us can be married to Jesus, you know? <laughs> Some of us are looking for actual husbands in the real world, Sister Maria. And you're gonna find that with a pair of pants on? Uh, I must say, Maria, you know everybody. Sister Maria is a very kind soul. She she truly is. Uh, she's from the church. It's run by an old friend of my husband's. Uh, and and what is it that you do exactly, Maria? Do tell them what you do with your day. You you give out alms. You what is it that you do? Oh, you know, none things. <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> Uh, I've know, devoted my life. I have devoted my life to taking care of the poor and the less fortunate. You know, no one uh, may be able to relate to that in this room, uh, but you know there are people who do struggle in this life, and I, I have devoted my life to uh, uh, taking care of them and being. We understand there for them. struggle. A lot of us struggle for things we really want. Sometimes you have to dress for what you really want, for success, love. Some of us are. Struggling. Okay. Oh, so I'm lucky enough to have some fun at this point in time. Uh, is it true, Maria, that you that you wash the feet of the poor? Um, you know, I um, abs yes, absolutely, I do. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I I do take part in 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 helping the poor bathe and uh, and washing mm -hmm. the feet. You know, makes me of service to them, of course. Of course, you know, Mike, I cannot uh, imagine washing. Feet have a lot of erogenous zones. You do understand. Reflexology, oh. it's another thing I've been studying besides yogi. Really uh, now, Joe? It, you know, Some Josephine, pressure points. Interesting. That is so, you know, wow. Josephine, You've I, not I'm, studied that, Ginny, out in some of your, some of your digs. You haven't found um, information about this. Other cultures that have been a part of it. RQ, what's it called? Acupuncture? Um, acupuncture, darling. Acupuncture, the yes, yeah. the needles. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of that. I actually tried it myself. Wouldn't really say it's my thing. Mm. Um, just like how I think that Maria's thing is also lying. But, um, you know, it's it's all good. It's all good. Joe, you know, I don't think we formally met. I'm Virginia. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to excuse, meet you. Excuse me. Did you just call me a liar? You know, you, I've seen a lot of liars in my life um, going around the world and such. And I don't know. I, there's something about you that doesn't sit right with me, Maria. Some yeah, that's mighty lies. ironic. You, you a know, little bit. Is it, is it true? And like Margo is like, I like that fervor of trying to like completely change. So I'm just like, Virginia, is it true that you have lived across three continents? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, Mm -hmm. Been around That's the world. So interesting. You know, I would count myself lucky if I could have a winter home in America, but Richard just won't let me out of his sight, as you'd hope from a man in love. Mm -hmm. um, um, as, as all of this is happening, Catherine is grabbing champagne and just staring at Sister Maria and just drinking like 
like uh, a zoologist stares at animals, you know? Like she's studying her. She's like, fascinating. And just drinking while she does it, while while this commotion and conversation is character heated. study, character study. I love it. <laughs> it's just a hoot, isn't she? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I must say, I will just. I need to go check on my husband. So if you all don't mind, we do have some guests arriving at one, but I believe they'll ring the doorbell and I'll come on down. But for now, I I'll just leave you uh, to to yourselves, to people to introduce yourselves. You know, I'll just be upstairs if you need me. And Margot just goes up the stairs to her husband and is hoping that you'll all become fast friends. Clarice, you're still left down there holding the food, if you like, but you were just entirely, like, unsupervised. I think... When um, Catherine and Amy came in together, Clarice probably took Amy to the side and was like, what do you think you are doing? Just talking with the guests. So like, as so as the Maria getting dog piled on was happening, we also had off to the side, uh, Amy and Clarice and Amy's sort of like, just like, um, well, I mean, it wasn't so much that I was talking with the guest mom. It, it was just, um, well, Miss Clayton, she's she was quite friendly, you know, and and she let me have some of her breakfast. And she what? <laughs> and I beg your pardon. Uh, I mean, you yourself test the food in the kitchen. I make the food. <laughs> you ate her breakfast. You ate the breakfast I no, carefully it. curated for her. I mean, yeah, but it was just a test that it was. Uh, it was just to see if it was good enough for Miss Clayton. Not, not that it wouldn't be good enough for. Oh, her. so you think you can taste my food and insult it too? Is that right? Uh, no, Miss Maiden. I just, I I'm ever so sorry. Is there anything I could do to make it up to you? Don't pretend to be friends with the guests. They are far too luxurious and fancy for you. You are a simple servant here. Okay. Absolutely, Mom. And my mother was too, and I know it rightly. That, that's totally fine. And Amy is like this, just for like perspective of imagination. She's like a fairly willowy, like, she's probably even, how tall would you be, Clarice? Uh, I'm like 5'3". I'm not very tall. Yeah, she's like a good like two to three inches taller than you, but she like leans back and like hunches away from you when you speak kind of thing. So you feel very much bigger than her. Um, and she's just this like sandy, like wisp of a girl. Um, would, uh, would you like me to get more champagne from the kitchens? Yes. Yes, I would. Okay. And she scuttles off. <sighs> and then I probably just, as like uh, Margot leaves also, just kind of turn back to the group and go, uh, Canapes? Anybody? Canapes? <laughs> I made them myself. Oh, what's in it? Mm -hmm. So we have this one, Yorkshire pudding, beef, a splash of horseradish. Well, a teeny, teeny bit. Okay, you um, a little more horseradish, not quick, to be quite honest. But it's delicious. Thank you so much for that opinion. Um, and and then we also have these um, bellini. You have uh, tarantulas. I actually tried some in Latin America the other a uh, couple months ago, and like it was such a delicacy. And I <laughs> <laughs> delicacy. Sure. I would assume you have such delicacies, do you not? Well, they were English. Um. So. Oh, what a shame. So yeah, they, they're not super adventurous around these parts, Ginny. I'm just going to let you know mm -hmm. that now. As far as cuisine goes. I've no, heard no, that she... goat testicles are also a delicacy in some other countries. Is that also something that you would like? I goat think that's testicles? You, uh, testicles seem to be in your menu now, is it, Maria? Oh, my goodness. You as I was just... saying, salmon. Oh. Salmon. Um, I like salmon. salmon. I like yeah, salmon. Uh, lovely. I um, Thank you. Dear. That sounds delicious. It is. It is. <laughs> How's it prepared? Well, that's a very big question. Um, you know, I, w oh. I wouldn't want to talk about how great this chef is. I just was curious. Like, I am the chef, darling. Um, oh. I am. Oh, yes. Right. I, now I understand why you were so upset by some of my reactions earlier. My, I do apologize. I'm giving her such a hard time. It's fun. Come on. <laughs> now, Ginny, I do believe this is the first time we have met in person. And after yeah. all our correspondence, can you believe it? How was the mummy movie? Was it, did it go well? Oh dear, it is shaping up phenomenally. Uh, yet to, to be released. It. And of course, mm -hmm. you will be invited when it happens. Um, and she's going to turn to Maria and Clarice and go, 
I make films. I'm a director. <laughs> uh, and Ginny here, just an absolute peach, a gem. She consulted on one of my recent pictures uh, about, I won't bore you with the details, but action, adventure, intrigue, drama, mummies. You will love it. I can't wait to see it. Honestly, I'll be there opening day. This Thank Catherine's you, always dear. electrical on screen. You're a star. You are too good to me, Joe. But really, as much as I appreciate the compliments, I feel my talents are better suited behind the camera. Actually, if I must be frank, my dream, getting Margot into a picture one day, can't you just see it? Wouldn't she just be divine? Absolutely. She's like sunshine in this yellow today, too. Perfect. Oh, I know. I'm not shine. imagine. I'm not a fan of uh, of moving pictures and such, but I will say that. Do you think they're of the devil? Screen. I just believe that our money is better spent in other places. Mm. Have you ever seen one before? Oh heavens, no! How could you it's speak on something you've never experienced? Uh, I, you know, millions and millions of dollars going towards uh, showing some stories when we have all the stories we need right here in the Bible. Mm. <laughs> they put a lot of those on screen, too. You should check them out. You might enjoy it. Perhaps I would at that. Of course, if Margot was in the film. Like the passion of the Christ. Watching him rise again. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. I feel like I am the butt of this joke and I do not understand it. <laughs> um, is there any, is there any like one person pulling another aside, little conversations that you'd like to have before the other guests arrive? I think I'd like to step away at, as they're laughing at me. <laughs> they're pulling <laughs> I'll, step <away>. <laughs> <laughs> I'll step away and go over to, uh, to Clarice and be like, um, I overheard you speaking to that woman, uh, that maid earlier. And I just have to say, I truly do admire you <sighs> and, uh, and how you rule this house with an iron fist. It's needed. It is needed, you know, especially those young, the young people, you know, they just don't understand what it means to put in some good hard work. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's just, it's, the uh, the work I have to put in to not only being a chef in this house, yes. but making sure that everything is there for Margot and Richard. Everything yeah, is exactly perfect, that there are no romances happening in the oh. court. Oh, oh. Exactly, darling. Oh, and it sick. It's, it's just so nice that Margot considers me a friend, you know? I We truly are a kindred spirits. We, um... Uh, she's come into this house and just made made a a wonderful companion to um, myself. Well, and Richard, and Richard, but myself too. And um, uh, it's just nice to be friends with your employees. Of course, employers. It's yes. employers. Yes, of course. Uh, I truly admire that in in, in you. And um, and of course, uh, I would expect that the um, the leftovers from today. Uh, would you like me to take that back to the convent as well? Oh well, uh, I don't see an issue with it. Of course, Maria. Um, maybe consulting Margot first would be. Oh, of course. Of course, of yes. course. I will always clear things with Margot first, um, but uh, I, I do appreciate your your work here, um, and uh, and always happy to have a friend in you. Oh, of course, sis. Of course. <laughs> and uh, there's a Margot comes down the stairs just as you like start discussing her and that kind of thing. Um, and is there anybody else who wants to pull anybody aside by any chance before I bring in the other? Companions? No? Okay. I'm gonna pull Catherine. Oh, oh I'll pull oh, Catherine. you pull Catherine? Yeah, pull yeah, Catherine. Go Catherine for it. Pull her Absolutely. Cat. I can't yes, believe you recognize me right away. That was very insulting in front of this group. What's that about? Joe, I am so sorry. Truly, I couldn't apologize more. You know what it's like, jet lag. It's been so long since we last saw each other. Yeah, it's been a long time and it seems like you're trying to change things up. What are you, what are you up to? You know me, just working on the next project as always, sourcing mm -hmm. my new talent, looking mm -hmm. for the best scripts, just exploring things creatively. And mm -hmm. uh, what of your latest ventures? It's been so long since we last talked. 
you know, like I said, just exploring new things around the world, collecting more art, racing some horses here and there. Racing for... horses? I know, it's a weird hobby. My brother's got me into it. Do you, do you get you money, money that for way. it? You, oh, yeah. Oh, you do. You can. Yeah. You, just... you can lose a lot. You can also win a lot. And you just watch them run. Yeah, they just go around in a circle. It's a hoot. You put on a fancy hat sometimes, get all dressed up. You would love it. I swear, Joe, I don't understand half the hobbies nowadays. But if watching horses prance around in a little lap is fun, I will take your word for it and I will join you sometime. You should. It's cute. Maybe it you can meet some it. investors there, you know, for your next project. We're uh, fine as is. Oh, Margo, right. Margo sort of comes in uh, and and sits back down the chaise lounge and uh, I believe Catherine, does Catherine need to just sit in the corner and drink her champagne for a little bit as well? Because, yes, as, as soon as yes. Joe says, you know, you could find uh, new investors, she kind of, she says, we're fine, thank you. Um, please, if you'll excuse me. And uh, she walks to the corner and drinks silently. <laughs> Um, so Margot is back uh, in the in the room for a little bit, and it's she's sort of glancing nervously at her watch because she's expecting everyone to have come back in already. And she, I, I must say, Maria, where is Father Thomas? Uh, have you seen him around? And you have not seen Father Thomas since like the time he spoke to you, like this morning. Yeah, he does stop in to my. Oh. Oh, bless you, Sister Maria. I am so, I am so sorry. You know, perhaps someone is speaking of you behind your back and that's caused you to sneeze. I'm so sorry. Oh, Sister Maria, I do a po Clarice, you didn't put any of that. Oh my goodness, what is it? That ginger, you didn't put any ginger in the- oh, No, 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 no. Allergic. You didn't, all right. Of course oh, not. I'm sorry, it's just all the, the smells of so many, um, so many foods. <laughs> you know, I've never, oh. it's just such a plethora here. It's just all the scents are, are getting oh, to absolutely. me. Oh, um, Yes. So of course, of course, it's fine. Um, uh, Father Thomas, um, I did see him this morning. He did stop in um, to uh, to check in on me, but I haven't seen him since uh, since my morning prayers. Oh, indeed. All right. You know, I I just I, I just do hope that he and Richard are able to speak before before both of you leave. You know, I, I believe they were in the war together and that sort of thing, and that's why I, they are chums. Mm -hmm. Them too. Yes, they are. They are indeed. Uh, uh, Clarice, honey. Would you be able to go downstairs for me and just, could you just, just make sure that everything's set up for the afternoon tea? You're not uh, nervous. Um, uh, uh, of course, Margaret. Could I just have a, a quick, a brief word with you? Oh, and, and absolutely. And she sort of stands up and walks over to wherever you'd like her to go. Um, Clarice kind of puts her hand on Margot to turn them with their backs to the, <laughs> their backs to the others. <laughs> okay. Um, well... Uh, I, I I want to say this privately too quickly, but I know that not all the guests showed up promptly on time, and if you want me to take any of them aside and just um, reprimand them or just tell them that that's not how we do things, then... Um, oh. oh, no, that's perfectly all right. I mean, if, if anyone's late to the afternoon tea, perhaps my, my little heart will be a little bit bruised, but I do believe that um, Mr. Williams will be here shortly, and I think that everybody will then feel very driven to arrive to everything on time, as as I <laughs> imagine. I think you've seen, I don't know if you've ever met Mr. Williams, very handsome man, very eligible bachelor, and perhaps he will cause some punctuality amongst those that are not already punctual. Uh, would you be a darling and go downstairs and get the food ready for me? Uh, of course, Marco, of course. <laughs> And you are uh, you you go on downstairs. We will visit you on your food preparation shortly. But no. for now, <laughs> I just make you role play the entire any cut the bread. I'll just Google some recipes real quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love it. Give me like I love this sandwich. cooking show now. I love it. Give me all the recipes. There's uh, there's toast. There's some eggs. Um, Yep. <laughs> it's like awesome. Do they have microwaves? <laughs> they had a fridge. They have a fridge. They're very great. They have a fridge. Um, so the there's the little bell at the front door sort of rings and the footman with the champagne goes over and he opens the door uh, and a throng of people come in um, and there's just various gentlemen and women, all of whom seem relatively well off. There's like a bedraggled starving artist type uh, or two there and um, all of them 
don't really like engage with any of you in the drawing room. They all like quickly say hello to Margot and then disperse in the way that you do when you're like very familiar with somebody and you're like, oh, I know where to go in the house, don't worry. Uh, but there is one man in the middle of the crowd who Margot actually pulls all over to the front and like towards the drawing room. Um, he's in his thirties. He's like, he's quite tall. He's about six foot four. Um, he's wearing a charcoal waistcoat and a white button up with like rolled up sleeves. He has this air of like casual and practical uh, and a bow tie that matches his waistcoat. He's got a, a very square jaw and thick brown hair that's receding ever so slightly at the temples which speaks more to his age than his face does he's got like quite a youthful bright sort of face folks this is mr williams mr williams is one of the most eligible bachelors in berkshire and he kind of like shifts uncomfortably when she says this <clears throat> i also enjoy a good radio show which i believe to be more pertinent to my character than my finances it's good to meet all of you when he sort of looks at all of you um, radio show you say yes are you by any chance a fan of uh films perchance absolutely i am fascinated by the progression that they've been making with the talkies i i can't wait until we can hear the voices of these actors who have been giving so much of themselves to the screen already do you do you yourself enjoy film Catherine clayton i don't just enjoy them i make them my goodness. And like, there's like a spark of recognition in his eyes when you say your name, actually. And he takes your hand with like the exact amount of reverence that you expect, but not the amount of reverence that you'd normally expect a person to give. But you're Catherine Clayton. So you're like, of course he's uh, acting this way. And he takes your hand uh, and he sort of like looks at it for a sec. And like, you can see in his brain, he's like, if he wasn't in like a group of people, he might even lean down to give it a kiss. But he sort of like takes it and just like nods at you. Um, the moment to meet your acquaintance, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Clayton, Ms. Clayton. Ms. Clayton, please. But call Ms. me Kit, my friends do. Kit, you can call me Charles. And, Charles. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, and he sort of uh, looks around, he's like, uh, and um, I'm, who, who, are, who, who are your friends? And he says like, your friends, even though they're Margot's friends, but he's like, who, who, are, who are your friends? And just to the rest like slips her arm in under the crook of his elbow like she's being led by him and she goes well charlie this is my good friend joe joe and i have worked on pictures together many times before in the past um just caught up a minute ago if you can believe it it's been years uh, uh, that there is Ginny. Ginny is one of the finest archaeologists I have ever had the pleasure to interact with. And let me tell you, in my line of work, I have interacted with more than one uh, you, Ginny. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Um, yes, I am one of the top leading arche female women archaeologists. Fascinating. All right. Soon surpassing my, you know, counterparts. So. You know, I've 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 met a fair share of archaeologists myself, uh, more in academic settings than than creative mm. ones, uh, as yours, Kit. Uh, but uh, I must say, a lot of them seem quite well up themselves. I'd say, but I, I can imagine <laughs> that a woman archaeologist has a bit more self awareness to her and appreciation yes. truly for the cultures. Yes. And if you ever have any questions, you can ring me. Absolutely. And he feels like he's like possibly offended you in some way. And he's like, really like, <laughs> he's like on edge. He's like, I was trying to be nice to her. And he's like, yeah. And he like sort of like leans into to Catherine a little bit. He's like, you know, I, I, I was trying to set her apart from her work, but I feel I've actually insulted the entire profession. Do you think I've done that? Yes. Move right along. Don't dwell, dear. Don't dwell. Over here, okay. you'll find, uh, what was your name again, dear? Mm, um... Mary, Mary the nun. Uh, uh, she Sister came Maria, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, my apologies, dear. Sister Maria has just been a hoot and a half, let me tell you. She is the life of the party. Uh, a hobby you might be interested in. She's tried it. Favorite types of food, beverage, you name it. She's tried it. She has just been regaling us nonstop today with laugh out loud tales of her charm, her poise, her wit, haven't you, dear? I suppose you could put it that way. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, and you yourself, I, I, I look forward to speaking with you more. I, uh, I, I do know that Margot, and he looks back at Margot, and Margot is like beaming, like she's so pumped right now. And she's like, you know, I was going to say that somebody needed to show Mr. Williams around the house because, you know, you've all been here a couple of days, you know your way around, and I am ever so busy with this delicious champagne. But Catherine, would you be willing to show Mr. Williams around the estate? 
oh, of course, Charlie, right this way. Follow me. And she just, and just saunters like, off. And yeah, this party immediately. This is a party and a half. Um, so basically, uh, we're gonna cut now to um Catherine, Kit, uh, and Charles walking around a little bit. Uh, so where would you take him first? We have the ground floor, which is like the ballroom, the library, the drawing rooms, that kind of thing, and the upstairs, which is where all the bedrooms are and that sort of thing. So whereabouts would you take him? I think she, are there grounds like outside there is, on there the estate? Is, yep, there's like a big hedge maze and then there's that uh, pagoda and lake off to the other side of the house. So I think she kind of quickens her pace and as they walk past the rooms, she goes, ballroom, drawing room, library. Now what I really want to show you is outside and she's going to take him to kind of go for a more a more scenic stroll Ooh. through the grounds. Um. And as you're walking, he sort of, uh, you know, I must admit to you, Kit, uh, I've visited the estate many, many times and uh, been in, I mean, I, I, I you know, I've, I've toured the estate many times and not often in such good company. I, I do worry that Margot's just trying to set me up with somebody. So if you'd rather return to the party with your friends, I completely understand. Oh, please, the party's out here. Now, tell me all about yourself, Charlie. What was it that you said you did again? Uh, well, I'm, um, I mean, I, I would call myself useless personally. I, I've come into some money recently from an inheritance and I, I, I have tenants and that sort of thing, but I, I do, I do miss being a, a working man or at least having some kind of purpose. I was, I was served in the army briefly, but, um, had to retire back here. And, uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm more of a creative at the moment, I suppose you would say. I enjoy my radio shows. I've been looking into oil paints, bloody expensive, those things. Um, and, but you, you yourself are far more interesting. You're a film director in, is it, I dare say, Hollywood? Yes, dear. Well, it is a very uh, fast paced lifestyle, one might say, but I find it intellectually stimulating, creatively challenging. I work with the most interesting people, visit the most interesting places. I truly can't recommend it enough if you're looking for a job. Uh, where, where could you see me? Well, being a film director, dear, I recommend it to anyone who's interested in trying it. You never know until you try. I always say that. I, I would be fascinated to hear more about the, the industry and, and how to go about that sort of thing. I've never really imagined myself in, in charge of that sort of thing. It seems so very much pressure, but I, you seem more than equipped to handle it. I, I worry that I would not be able to, you know, uh, Margot's always going on to me about how I should indeed just allow myself to remain this placated and settle down with a, well, not settle, of course, but, you know, retire with a lovely woman and be married and that sort of thing. And it's... It, you know, kid, it is a bother to be in good wealth and alone and for that to be seen as, as a lack, something to be fixed. But um, I, I, I would be remiss to not acknowledge that perhaps a woman in such as yourself is indeed pressured even more so and with more daunting prospects awaiting you should you not comply, should you stay single. Is that your experience or is your career perfectly fulfilling to yourself? I choose not to define myself by the pressures placed upon me. I find the strongest and most durable materials can withstand any amount of pressure or weight put on them, and yet they don't bend or break, such as myself. I'm perfectly fulfilled by my career, my lifestyle, friends, such as the ones you've met inside. Charming characters, all. To share it with a partner would be... A bonus, not a necessity. I agree. It is good to see somebody in such uh, grounded spirits. I, I, I truly, I wish that everyone were as we were, Catherine, but alas. I, you know, I have never actually been into the, oh, what is that called? And he gestures like rather uselessly in like the pagoda shape. Uh, the, the pedagogy. dear. The Padga, of course, absolutely, yes. yes. Would you would you like to go look upon the lake? I believe Margot keeps poor servants. They're forced to fill up the breadcrumbs every every day in the Padga. Padga, and he's like looking at you for like it was like Padga. Padga, yeah, fair fresh breadcrumbs. We could we could feed the birds if if you'd like. After you, 
Absolutely. And you and you and Charles go and you feed the bears with the breadcrumbs. Uh, and then we cut to the servants' quarters where Clarice currently is. And Clarice, what are you doing down in the servants' quarters with about an hour and a bit left for afternoon tea coming up? Well, I'm cooking up a storm. Um totally from my own memory, I'm serving <laughs> oysters with champagne vinegar mignonette, mignonette. Um, fig and silton salad with port wine dressing um, English Eccles cakes floating islands with lemon scented custard sauce and raspberries so they can ask you questions about them later oh please oh. do, I would love that so much <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm probably just ordering people around the kitchen, making sure that everything is happening to a very, very time degree. As full of herself as Clarice is, she does know that everything has to be done by a specific point so that it can all kind of be served uh, when it should be. Okay, and working alongside you is uh, your assistant, Hugo, who even though you're five foot three um he's like he still comes up to like just like your eye level so he's like he's quite a short lad um and he's about 19 and he's just sort of uh putting the oysters on the tray like when you hand him a tray you notice he like kind of like fixes it like a tiny little bit before like putting it on the serving table uh well uh you know when you when you turn those that way i don't think it presents quite as nicely as how they and I like reach over and turn it right back. <laughs> oh well, mom, the 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 front of the plate is on the other side, so I presume they would want to be able to just pick the oyster up and immediately, rather than having to turn it. You know, I was what I was I was reading. There's a new angle to be eating oysters at. You know, I, I I'm I'm trying. How long do you think I've worked here, dear? Just oh. give it a guess. Uh, Fifty years. <laughs> Excuse me, how old do you think I am? Well, no, I mean, uh, uh, some people, they, they start working as young as 10. I, I met my friends by it. I... So, you think I am 60 years old, child? Uh, I, I just, I, I... Were you born yesterday? I... Whilst I confess getting on slightly in my age, I'm certainly not 60. I apologize, Mrs. Maiden, how, how old are you? That is a very rude question to ask. Absolutely, I'm... So, as I was saying before you were so insolent, is that, well, I know you've been re... you read fan... Uh, uh, yes, I've, I've, I've... I read quite a lot, actually. I'm trying to learn to be as good a chef as you, so... <laughs> Really? Oh dear, we can all try to achieve our dreams. <laughs> uh, that's very sweet of you, dear. Um, so these fads of eating oysters in new ways, they don't last long. I have been working in this job for, well, I've been chef for a long time, but in the, in the, the workings of this house for the better part of 30 years, dear. And, and these fads, they come and go, but... I know best. <laughs> do you plan on, well, um, do you plan on being a chef forever then? Well, dear, I, I don't think I'll be a chef forever. I think one day I'll be, I'll, I'll reach a new heights, you know? I, I, well, don't tell the other servants this because they might get jealous, but I have oh, start- Mom, I'm a chef like yourself. Well, don't, uh, okay. But, as I was saying before again you interrupted, um, I'm building up a sort of rapport with the other, the other guests here, and, um, and, I don't know, maybe one day, obviously Margot considers me a friend, obviously Richard and I go way back, but, um, perhaps I believe one day I will be in their social circles. I, I, uh, you know, I have been reading the the Baker pamphlets recently, which do oh. speak about what the Baker pamphlets. You know, they they've got they've got good stuff in them. You know, they speak about class and communism. You what? bring communism into our home. 
they are written by a communist, but they do discuss so you know, communism consciousness. And I mean, rather than perhaps trying to move up into the world into you know the <laughs> oppressive class, instead you could work on. Appra did you just call? Who are you calling oppressive? Well, of course not. Did me. you just call Richard? No, the person who employs you, the person who gives you a wage, who gives you a home. It's just that they're part of the class, aren't they? So they just... You we're know, all part of a class, a dear. Oh, but I didn't think you were in a class of idiots. I just... You cannot believe this mm, communism and... Ooh, we have sickles and... I, it just... It doesn't make sense, dear. It doesn't make sense. I don't need a sickle here. I have a sh I have a whole kitchen. I don't I need thought, that. Because you've, you've always spoken about women getting the vote and that sort of thing, so I thought perhaps... Well, yes, of course women should get the vote, but... But do we need... Do we need more than that? I mean, I just... I just don't... I don't know. I, um... um sorry, Mum, did you want... Do you want anything else from me before I... Just make sure all of the oysters are back turned where I said them. Where I said them. Sorry, Mom. He just sort of like turns the oysters just sadly. It was like staring at the oysters. Um, and you see sort of Mr. Smith just scuttling around in the back um, and Claire and everyone's just sort of... No one's really doing anything because no one has anything to do right now because all of the rooms have been turned around, that sort of thing. And it's all it's all good. And then we, we watch as um, Catherine and Charles make their way back from the pagoda and they go back into the room and Margot's still there, still drinking. And what have just, just vignette it for us. What have Joe and Maria and Virginia been talking to Margot about? So, um, I think I'll, uh, find it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll find an op or opportunity to ask her, uh, if we can donate the leftovers from food from this great function oh, yeah. to the poor. Um, I mean, I <laughs> I suppose. I mean, you might have to ask Clarice. I don't want to get offended or anything like that. Oh, we, we've had uh, arrangements in the past. I'm sure that she will be okay with it. Of course, she w would want to make sure that you have the blessings, you know, unless you oh. had any other plans for the uh, the massive waste of food that may, uh, you know, occur from... from I guess some of it's not going to taste that good once it's cold, though. So you do want to give them I these agree. cast offs? Like, I don't understand. You know, I will say that it'll taste take better than sleep. Oh, absolutely, Virginia, absolutely. Uh, I mean, we do have absolutely. afternoon tea in about an hour, but if you'd still like to take some, it's perfectly fine. I like mm -hmm. um, midnight snacks. Yeah, same. In mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, indeed. Uh, and then mm -hmm. we sort of, we pan away from the drawing room and we find, uh, sort of, we see up in his office, Richard is just writing away at his political papers and that sort of thing. And Father Thomas is in there with him, just like chatting with him as friends doing that sort of thing. Uh, and then we sort of pan away from that room to the window that's across the way. And we go through the window and we see the hedge maze. And then we fade to black for a moment as we go to our intermission. So afterwards we'll be having afternoon tea and I'm sure it'll be just like a nice time. <laughs> it's getting along, the energy is yeah. good. I think it'll be great. Um, so yeah, we will return in five minutes, have a stretch, get some water, pat your pets if you have any, um, and we will see you shortly. Bye. Hi everybody, welcome back to Wicked Lies and Alibis. Thank you so much. I hope that you enjoyed uh, the intermission sweet smooth jazz uh, moment that we had there um before we return to our story i want to really quickly thank you all for filling up the cause i don't know where it is it's one of the ways the cause of the <laughs> ruffle bar thank you so much for the support that's ridiculously kind of you um hannah are you able to thank the people that have yes. the kerfuffle for me thank you um thank you very much mike lucas lanfa um, derek junk garage sales gab jenny beans scorcher shake and bake sales gap again and duke thank you so very very much for filling up and uh, filling up the bar and supporting all of our cast and thank you also for all the gifted subs and brand new subs y'all are the sweetest what the heck thank, thank you, you so much, much. I appreciate it um we also just so everyone as i thought to mention at the start um we are also four patrons away from our current patron goal and once we reach our patron goal we will be doing a one or two shot of honey heist um so if you'd like to support the channel more uh i designed all the graphics for the screens the intermission that kind of thing and hannah set up a lot of the administrative stuff and patreon just helps support us um and make us able to do those things so if you want to support that we have a patreon where we post lots of exclusive fun stuff i literally posted the floor plans for this mansion like on patreon because i'm like in it i'm dedicated to this 
building um so yeah um and with that in mind uh players are we all ready to dive back in have a <laughs> sweet afternoon tea because i am oh yeah honey heist is the whole cast is bears doing crimes so it's a good time um all right so we return back to wicked lies and alibis uh the system hopefully has been explained a little bit in the intermission screen it makes a bit more sense um but for now we there's no murder. There's no worries. Nothing at all. There's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of verbal murder of Sister Maria in particular, but um, in general, it's all lovely. Um, and you've all sort of gone back up to your rooms, just like powder your nose, like perhaps change if you want. I don't know if uh, maybe one of you is the sort of change clothes like several times in one day. Margot certainly is, and she's in a silver number now. Oh my gosh, just at me next time, Harley. <laughs> I was thinking it, but I was like, I'm not going to railroad your character. <laughs> 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 Uh, one of you maybe wink wink Catherine. <laughs> yes uh Catherine would have excitedly found amy and pulled her up to her room and had amy help her pick an outfit and would have tried to convince her to model some of Catherine's finer gowns as well she would have been like oh be a dear and try this fashion on. show yeah, yes. you know, she's like trying to get it she totally doesn't understand that that's inappropriate for her to be doing at work but she yeah, thinks they're like, pals you know she's in so much trouble i feel <laughs> honestly she's like she like knows she needs to be like down there to like help with the food for the afternoon too and she's like i i mean i, I do worry that we might be a bit late on the on the service if i'm I, I, green is your color try oh. it on i won't hear another word Oh, I mean, all right. And she sort of puts on the, what sort of green dress have you got her putting on? It's one of those dresses where it has like thick, uh, what would you call it? Straps? Thick, mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah, it's like sleeveless. the shift kind of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like a little shift. And then it has um, pearls that have been strung together as like little false cap sleeves. Oh, I love so that. So just cute. like strings of pearls hanging over her shoulders. And then it has a really, really, really low waist. So it's one of those ones where it hits you like below the hips almost. Mm -hmm. And then it's all, instead of being fringe, it's like art deco layers of beading. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, scalloping sort of happening. I love yeah, that. Exactly. Okay, and she's I like want completely this dress. It's so pretty, pretty right? I want it too. Oh, um, oh. And it's like she looks lovely in it because she's like she's a perfectly pretty girl. Um, and like fits her figure, but like her posture is just like awful because she's like just very nervous and that sort of thing. And she's just like, um, I mean, I, I this is lovely, but I, I do need to change before the afternoon tea. So I mean, the dress I thought for you, perhaps you could what, you you what, could wear a green moment. one as well. One moment. Oh. And she's going to put one hand on her back and then one hand on the front of her shoulder to straighten her. And she's going to go, ladies never slouch, upright, chin up. You are wearing a beautiful dress. You are beautiful. You need to own it. And we walk. And she starts walking across the floor without looking to see if Amy's following her. Amy, and, Amy's, Amy um, like takes a second and then walks with her after a beat. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, darling. Chocolate? And oh. you can see she's been eating like little truffles and um no that's all right mom i dairy up upsets my stomach um i i was wondering do you is there much um transcription in in the in the films you know do you do you have people that do shorthand and, and typing and that sort of thing only every day why do you ask dear well it's just i mean I've not done it for about a year now, but I I, I was taking classes in, in shorthand, and I was I was wondering if I could, um, if you ever wanted uh, help help with that. I, I, I there's no secretarial positions in the village, so um, if you would consider perhaps, um, Catherine turns away from her and goes into one of her bags and starts rummaging while she's talking, and she pulls out uh like a journal essentially uh and and a pen and she turns and she hands it to her and she goes ready mm -hmm. romeo romeo wherefore art thou romeo deny thy father and refuse thy name or if thou wilt not but be sworn my love and i'll no longer be a capulet may i see uh Yes. And she sort of hands it over to you. And she's like, she's misspelled Romeo and Capulet, but like the actual like script that's been written is like perfectly, like it's really good, but she's misspelled Romeo and Capulet. How soon can you leave your post? 
Um, well, I, I've never really thought about that kind of thing properly, at least, so I, I'd have to check. You're coming home with me at the end of this trip. Uh, be a dear, would you, could you put that back in my bag? I'm just going to go get changed before the next part. Um, pack your things, and when I go home, I expect you on the plane with me. Yes, mom. And she just like puts the thing back in the chest for you and like closes it. And then uh, we we travel on downwards to afternoon tea. Is anybody doing anything special? Anyone being somewhere they shouldn't be or anything like that before afternoon tea that uh, we would want to know about? Oh, yes. I'm jo. definitely rummaging through the house and I am looking <laughs> as much as I can for anything that seems of value that they might not miss. <laughs> All right. Are you on the ground floor or the, on the first floor? Yeah, I'm on the I'm on the first floor, just looking around, you know, going into the study, maybe the library, all that kind so, of stuff. So, so uh, the first floor has like mostly guest bedrooms. There is a room which looks like it's Margot's room. It has like a big mirror on the side and like a mm -hmm. dancing like rail kind of thing, and then like a little like chair and some books that sort of thing. There's also like a small library nook, and then mm -hmm. there's Richard's study, and there's also a room next to the. Study. Oh, I'm going to Richard's study. Going to yeah, Richard's yeah, study. Yeah. Okay. Um, on Is his desk, there's just little, like he, he's okay. not in there right now. No, okay. he's he's like with Margot in their bedroom or something, probably being mm -hmm. cute, like cute couple, Ugh, whatever. Anyway, uh, uh, uh. Um, <laughs> and uh, so his so you go into the office. It's like a standard office. It has like a really nice sturdy desk, like a ton of drawers mm -hmm. in it. Oh and yeah, I'm going through those desk. drawers because he's got to have some sort of good stuff in there. I'm looking for, <laughs> you know, any any good, beautiful, like, I don't know, some, like I said, something they won't miss. Mm -hmm. And then also looking through his papers maybe to see if there's any deals. Or anything happening that he's working on that maybe I could weasel my way into? There's a lot of uh, medals that he has like in his drawers that aren't on display for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Um, there's a lot of medals. He also has a lot of business papers and he is he's a retired businessman now, but he's still like kept up to date with like the businesses that he left and that sort of right. thing. He still gets income from them. He gets his reports. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's got like a steel yeah. mill going on. He has oh, yeah. like, I'm stuff in the I'm north and the factories. Oh yeah, I'm going to be looking at what those, 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 uh, roles those bank roles or so to speak look like from those uh or ledgers from those businesses and seeing which one maybe we could scrape a little from you know just a little just like just a, a little, little bit just like a little, a little bit, bit off like, the top just a it's little like nothing it's like totally fine it's like no big um, deal it's like no big deal um, like a little there, bit of crime a little bit of crime it's like a little bit of crime uh, it's like a tiny <laughs> <of> crime <laughs> there is like um there's a steel mill like receipt and that kind of thing that's like pre it's like looking really good and it's like good production mm -hmm. levels all really good they just love they love richard oh. and there's another steel mill one as well which is mm -hmm. like a sort of like a proposal kind of thing that's been like Ooh. sent and then returned but there's no like income or anything it's just mm -hmm. like a we'd like you to work with us here's our info but to the get deal back is to not us closed like. yet so maybe no. that's something i could finagle my way into and i like it i'm gonna um do what i can to find a little oop, here we are there's a little pad and paper and yeah i grab yeah. a little pad and paper and uh all right so it's, and I uh, it's, from a, yeah, it's from like a factory in Manchester mm -hmm. and it's like some guy called like I it's just like it's just like the initials like C and then like Williamson or something okay great done perfect amazing so um are you once you've done that are you done poking around yeah I mean I might just cruise by Margot's place and maybe grab a couple of jewels you know just <laughs> Margot's stuff is like kept like in her bedroom where the door is closed and like if you knock they're probably in there but you can go and look if you want if you want to go into their room while they're in there Ooh, I'm gonna not chance it too much I okay. just want to look around and see if there's anything just like maybe laying about um maybe she has like a little dressing table or something she has like a small like uh like dancers kit kind of thing like in her mm -hmm. room and then she's like got her place where she like discards all of her stuff and takes it off before she dances and there's like a bracelet or two like on a side oh table great I'm gonna room. grab one of the bracelets just so not all of them because you know that would not be all of them that'd be suspicious yeah yeah just one that sounds good Thank you. Beautiful, stunning. Thank you. And after you've stolen from your kind host, um, you go down to afternoon tea um, and there's three tables and the tables all have like name cards on them for people to sit in certain places. And there's about three spots to a table. Um, so the first table 
um, is labeled with Catherine, uh, Charles, and then the name James. You don't know who James is yet, but that's who's sitting at the table with you. Um, the second table is Virginia, Maria, it's gonna be great, uh, and Margot. Uh, and the third table is marked for uh, Vicar Thomas, um, Josephine, and Richard. So do you all just sort of file in as normal and sit in your places? Literally never, never once in my life have I done that. <laughs> never once have you been on time. <laughs> never no, once. Absolutely never once. not. Um, I think Catherine gets held up by whoever has, I assume somebody still has champagne. Oh yeah, there's like a footman who's like still like at the door kind of. You're meant to, you're, the intent is to like take the champagne and walk through the rest of the hall with it, but he's at the very start of the hall. Catherine has gone back to him and is just standing. She got the champagne, but then she never left him. So she's still there talking to him and explaining the plot of her latest film, not noticing that the, the party has moved on. He's like, that's, that's very interesting, ma'am. Yes, I, I have always wondered about the um, exploits of the, uh, what did you call them again? Uh, the disenfranchised youth. Yes, uh, the disenfranchised youth. Yes. yes, and let me just tell you, if you have never seen uh, trained animals on a film set before, well, my dear, you are in for a surprise. We can have children on film sets nowadays, and animals, let me tell you, there is this tiny little monkey. You would just love it. Mm -hmm. He stands on his hind legs, he dances, he has a little hat, steals all of my jewels, but it's a small price to pay for the performance that we get on film at the end. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. And he has like this like tone to him where he's like, he doesn't want to talk to you, but he knows he has to because he's trying to like a nice polite woman. And he's like, yes, mom, very interesting, mom. Um, and Virginia, uh, do you sort of sit down at your spot on the table next to Margo and Maria and everything? Yes, I'm uh, sitting at the table and I have that letter from earlier in my pocket. So I'm kind of just like rereading it under the table, hoping no one sees me. And yeah, just kind of in my own zone, reading okay. that letter again. Um, Charles comes down the hall near where you are, Catherine, and he sort of uh, notices that you're with the footman, and he, the, uh, Kit, you know, I've got more champagne and tea, tea in fact, the English sort, uh, oh. in the <laughs> dining room. Oh, I must have lost track of time. Uh, and she turns back to the footman. Remind me of your name again, dear. Theo, mum. Theo was just regaling me with oh, <laughs> the funniest stories you ever did here. It's always a pleasure, Theo. And then she's going to turn and uh, take Charles's arm. Yeah, walk. Charles' like, arm is like very much like already out for you. And then he just like, he loops arms with you and you walk into the afternoon tea uh, spot together and everyone sits at the tables, uh, unless anybody. Clarice, you, you'll have your moment. Don't worry. You'll get, you'll get it. I know. Don't worry. She'll have her minute. Clarice is never, never far. Um, but everyone sits at their assigned seats uh, and uh, so they bring in the afternoon tea, which I do believe was oysters, English Eccles cake, uh, floating islands with lemon, I believe it was, which is what I had. What is that? You're muted, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was explaining exactly what it was. I wouldn't want to do that again because, no. gosh. Um, it's like, it's, it's also like salad rolls and like your average sandwiches and cucumber cheese and that kind oh, of thing. Oh, this floating lemon looks delicious. It, yeah, it's basically like a little pool of custard and then the, so it looks like the cake is floating in the custard and then there's like raspberries on top. Okay, so they have I want that. this now. Yeah, that yeah. actually sounds really good. <laughs> sounds really nice. They, they bring through like the stands that they have that are like curved and that sort of thing. And they have the plates in between and they're like, it's very like fine china and you can just hear it rattling against like the gold sort of stands. And that sort of thing. As the footmen come and they put it down in front of you all. Um, and you can see the scones as well with clotted cream. There's two different teas on the table. Um, and we will first be going to the table with Virginia and Margot and Maria on it. Uh, Margot is, as the food gets set down, she's just like looking at both of you, she's very excited, and she's like, isn't it just lovely? It's Virginia, it's a very English thing this afternoon to you. Have you ever had it before? Um, yes, uh, I was actually in England a couple months ago. I, you know, my work, I, I'm all over the place and I do quite love it. It's nice and, you know, exquisite. Um, absolutely, you know, I am, I myself, 
it's simple to the English, I suppose, but I do love the scones and the jam. Uh, Maria, will you be partaking in the scones at least? I mean, it's only bread. You really shouldn't, Margo. Oh, for me, Maria. And she like leans over and like puts her hand atop your hand, like looks at you like, oh, for me, would you? For you, Margo, I suppose I will take a bite. You are too kind. And you and she sort of puts the scone like on the plate for you and then just like <laughs> she just like a crumb of it. Yeah. <laughs> Stunning, beautiful. And um, I keep my hand where she touched it too. Oh, cute. Um uh, okay. so Virginia, how is it that I mean, I am just fascinated with archaeology myself, but I've mm. not had the honor of meeting you before, but my husband is quite familiar with you. How is it that you met him? Um, I actually met him while he was away at war. Um, yes, during one of my archaeology trips. Um, I meet a lot of people, you know, during my work. So that is when I met him. And he was he's quite lovely. You definitely got yourself one for sure. Oh, you are too kind. Yeah, I do. I, I would appreciate if he came downstairs to the afternoon tea, but he, he is sweet, truly. And I'm glad to hear that he is the same a uh, man today, as he seems to have been a decade ago, although, yes. of course, more confined to his quarters. Uh, uh, Maria, are you all right? You do seem to have a quarrel with the tablecloth. Oh, not at all. Um, I, uh, is Richard going to be joining us at all today, or will we have you all to ourselves? Oh, well, I mean, you know, I... I, I have you been to one of these parties before, Maria? And you've been to, like, several of these parties before and, like, several, like, charity balls and stuff with her. Uh, only behind the scenes, you know. I'm usually yes. busy with the organizing and everything. Back uh, with the, the so... kitchen staff and everything. Yeah, bless your soul. You are too dedicated. Uh, I mean, I usually am the main host of these kinds of things, uh, but Richard is is a, a bit distant, usually, uh, uh, to, to, of late. I apologize, and I, I do worry about him, but I have a recital later. I will be performing my most recent opera to all of you, and I do hope that he comes and watches there because I do enjoy when I feel supported by my partner. Well, you do have the voice of angels, so he would be he would be missing out on that one. Oh, my, you are blasphemously too kind. You stop. Oh, no, shucks. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> um, and you two talk amongst yourselves, uh, Virginia and Maria, while I have to briefly go AFK, but I trust you. <laughs> so, Maria, um, <clears throat> you're not hungry. Did you have breakfast this morning? I do partake in a very simple breakfast meal just for sustenance. You know, I do believe mm. that the the best work I can do for the Lord is is when I my body is is uh, healthy enough to function. But um, I do not partake in anything too. Yeah, grand. that's her work for the Lord. She needs to be really strong. <laughs> You're not at this table, Joe. Quiet. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. They left me over here with the vicar. Perfect. <laughs> I mean, I can't talk to you from this table. <laughs> I can't oh. hear anything, actually, through the, the whipple. It's just... Uh, oh, it's is it everything. too much? Too much for mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Jenny. Joe yelling over the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> What? I'm sorry. Me? sorry. Never. Continue. Loud American? No. <laughs> Don't let me to interrupt. Please continue. Ginny, I was I was wondering, uh, who are you getting your your funding from to come all the way here to to England? Um. Well, I am an independent woman. Maria, so I don't get funding from anyone. I fund myself. And I decided to come here and see a good friend. What do you and, get your funding from since you love to beg people for help? That's a oh, better I'll... question. I heard that burn from over here. <laughs> she's so concerned with where everyone, everyone fund her, fund her. That's why every she's time, asking. Every time that Josephine like yells over the table, like Pastor Thomas, like hunch, like sorry, Vicar Thomas, confusing, uh, like hunches over and like just stares at his plate because he's like, he's like turned away from you. Like that table's turned away from you. And Joe is like leaning around to be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Well, you know, some of us do care about those who are less fortunate. And so um, it is my, the Lord has tasked me with this responsibility of taking care of the poor and the sick and the needy. And so I will do that duty uh, for, right. for the rest of my life, you know, to the best of, of my ability, to, best of, to the best of the bil- ability that the Lord has bestowed in me. I am simply yeah, a vessel yeah. for him. Yeah, just collecting money. Right. Collecting and collecting for and who knows what. That knows necklace, where. Sister Maria, what it seems like it's gold. What is what is that made out of? Oh, this was a gift. Uh, you know, from uh Jesus? From, uh, you know, a generous donor themselves, Uh, um, you know, uh, to display my, uh, my stature in the church. And Um, you don't think that you could possibly sell that necklace and help those in need? Oh, well, uh, you know, perhaps, but I do believe that the stature does give me the ability to speak with those who are rich like you um, mm. and, uh, and and get into parties like these in order to find people. So, so it all you're comes saying full that circle. you have to dress the part? <laughs> <laughs> this is a I think uniform. you might try a different tactic. <laughs> uh, I mean, we must respect those that wear a certain uniform every day. It does, it shows dedication, doesn't it, uh, Maria, to the Lord that you wear such, such modest attire? Thank you. You know, uh, in the Bible, it does say that the love of money is the root of all evil. So, um, so why is know, the church mm-hmm. always making you ask for it, is the question. Well, uh, because if it's um, so bad. Well, because you- the communities in the world have have let down their people. Um, and uh, mm-hmm. if you notice anything about uh, the government not caring, you know, we, um, oh God, I'm going communist nun now. <laughs> <laughs> if there uh-huh. is no one to take care of the people who are less fortunate than us, then the church must do it. And that does require money, unfortunately. Um, oh, but, so it's uh, not all evil is what you're saying. Okay. Just, yeah. I just want to get here. <laughs> I mean, it's Thank simply so the much. way of things, isn't it? And she's dressing like Maria and Virginia. She's like trying to ignore Josephine. And she's like, because like there's like a defensiveness of Maria that Margot has because like, this is a guest. And she's like, everyone's having a fun time. It's all great. We all like each other. And she's like, I, I mean, that is just the way of things, isn't it? It's not that we want to help the poor rise above their station. It's simply that the role of the church is to give them alms where they can. So you just want to keep the poor poor is what I just heard in that. Is that what you just said? Ah, uh, Vicar Thomas, I do believe that you can speak to to MX Wagner about about the church, can you not? And Vicar Thomas does like sort of lead into you, oh, and he stuck. like he like speaks to me with you about the church. And like when we cut to you now, you've got yourself in it. Now I'm going to make you talk to Vicar Thomas about the church. Um, <laughs> um oh. and then do uh, Virginia and Maria? Do you have anything else that you particularly wanted to say to each other before we cut to another table or to Margo in that? Mm, no no you're good you're gonna no eat, i'm yeah. good eat your club sandwich and you're good okay <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna go over to josephine uh and vicar thomas and there is also an empty spot at the table which has richard's uh placard on it and uh does anybody happen to elbow their way into the room to hi an empty seat <laughs> hey hello it's me <laughs> clarice <laughs> Um, How is it that you make your way into the afternoon tea room and take the seat of? The- I probably once again decided to bring up the the a plate of food myself as if oh it was conveniently forgotten, but and I've had to bring it up because everyone's so busy now. Oh, um, yeah. You someone's got to do it. It's gonna have to be exactly. Here. So I I bring up some more like. <laughs> finger sandwich type of like with the crust cut off and everything sort of foods I'm just like uh, and I put it down and um I just kind of spot the empty seat and make my way over quite quickly before sitting down is everyone enjoying the food <laughs> and um Vicar Thomas obviously has been like away like during the the refreshments and stuff so he doesn't recognize that you're are you are you in your apron or are you just like in normal i probably i'm probably in my work uniform but no apron okay okay so vicar thomas like doesn't quite clock that you're like a member of staff exactly um and he's just like oh um uh hello i'm sorry what, what, what was your name i don't think i've had the pleasure of meeting 
Oh, uh, I'm Clarice, Clarice Maiden. It's so lovely to meet you, Father. And uh, uh, you as well, Clarice. Um, I, I, I do believe I have seen you at church a couple of times. As... Oh, of course. I, I make sure to go whenever work allows me. And, and... It, are you, oh, there was, are you the Clarice Maiden that sent the, the small Yorkshire puddings over to... to... Oh, yes, <laughs> of course. Were Those were amazing. You must... Do you have a cookbook for sale, that sort of thing? I mean, I'd love to... Oh, uh, well, I can't really share trade secrets, you know. They're, they're all you stored away. too cold when they got to you. I'm... I'm... Puddings. I'm... I must say, I have not been aware that you're meant to eat Yorkshire puddings when they're hot. I don't think I've ever had a hot Yorkshire pudding. Oh, I have been missing out, haven't I? Father, you've never had a hot I Yorkshire pudding? Had... No, I I mean, I, I spent some time... I don't Ooh. think I've ever had a luxurious meal as a You must no, come it's... over for Sunday roast. Oh. I'm sure Margo and Richard will have you, and, and I can serve you a proper hot Yorkshire pudding with some gravy. I have to trade my palate. I mean, from the... From my childhood as a poor boy, to the army, to being a vicar, there's been little room for, for luxury and indulgence. Um, and then I will imagine this is the point where Josephine yells stuff over at the other table, and then Jesus. when the, Tom, <laughs> the church suck, and then Vicar Thomas sort of, <laughs> like, goes to Joe, and he's like, I, I, Ms. Widener, I, Sister Maria, she does enjoy her recitations and her quotations. I... Myself. Right, she seems a bit overly zealous, is what I'm getting. Well, at. she's passionate. Emotion, she's little... passionate. Well, I, you know, I do, I do worry about the. I prefer to look into how God communicates to the individual rather than how He once communicated to antiquity, and I just I worry that Maria's out of touch, as it were. And you know, well, I yeah. was hoping that she would, you know, relax while she was here, but she seems you know, as tense as ever. Sometimes when people are trying so hard to do something, you got to wonder what they are actually opposed against, right? She seems like she's trying a little too hard, that's all I'm saying. I don't think she believes half the things she spouts. Indeed, sometimes circumstances drop us in things that we don't quite believe. And he, like, toys with his, like, like whatever you call it. Dog tag Dog's thing. collar, I think it's dog's called. Dog's collar. No, it is. I think it is called that. Or collar. Yeah. In general. The collar, it's whatever. It's like little priest so, collar thing. Oh, you've had your doubts then too, Vicka? Yes. I, um, I went into the clergy after the war because I couldn't quite deal with what I had done and the things I had seen. And I wasn't well versed enough in the difference between Catholicism and Protestantism, and it turns out Catholic Catholicism is quite rigid, no marriage, and encourages everybody to believe that we're all inherently sinful, as it were. And I find myself straying closer to the more modern Protestantism that so much of England supports, and I do. I mean, I admire you and your, I mean, I know the Widener name and how you've built yourselves up. I wish I had that sort of drive. No, it's not drive, that's generational wealth. So, you, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm proud that you've seeked more and at least can be honest with me that I feel like all the conversations I've had with everyone else here have been completely rooted in lies. Mm. <laughs> well, I thought we had Sorry. quite a lovely conversation, Sorry. actually. I mean, we mostly talked about food. And what is really more pleasant a, a conversation than that? Well... Ms. Maiden, you must have interests other than food. Is there anything that that you find yourself stuck, any rock and a hard place you find yourself stuck between? I don't know if we should talk about such things. I I just enjoy conversing with um, the friends here, the friends of the house, of course. Um, of course, things to be grateful for then. Yes, and... Um, so rising above your station is not a conversation you want to have. Um, ex excuse me? <laughs> I, I, I presume, uh, oh, Josephine refers to the uh, position of chef rather than any sort of, I mean, inherently, of course, we are all of equal value, but I suppose yeah. Josephine... In America, you would have your own line of restaurants, maybe, or, you know, if you want to continue, maybe... Something a little more industrious. Industrious? Could, whole, could maybe have a whole chain. Maybe if you figured out to how to keep all those Yorkshire puddings hot, you could have a whole, you know, hot 
My Yorkshire puddings are served exactly as they are intended to. Thank you so much for really clarifying that how point. To, how to multiply and make success out of something. So I think you do a lot of good where you are as well, Miss Maiden. The church always appreciates your donations, and I'm sure that Mr. Fairfield and Mrs. Clyde are equally appreciative. I'm sure wherever you are, your exemplary cooking skills are appreciated. No, I truly enjoyed. I truly enjoyed my breakfast today. The coffee was actually not bad. Well, thank you. I think. I typically when I have coffee here, it's never good. That's all. Here is in the house, or here is in England. Oh, is in England. England. So sorry, that wasn't clear. <laughs> Well, I'm sure our team more than makes up for it, so. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. Have you not I tried? The meal? Are you talking about the meal or the drink? Because that's always confusing to me, you know? Well, the drink, of course, a good, oh, a good we, English. We've got two here in fact, just we have the, the Earl Grey and the English breakfast. I'm sure they have herbal upon request. The Lady Grey is very good too, I, I believe. Oh, not, not had that myself. Um, and is, is there anything else that Clarice and Joe want to talk about with each other or? Mr. Mr. Thomas? Vicar Thomas. Name <laughs> uh, Not that I can think of. No? Okay. We will then move on over to the lovely Catherine uh, and her two NPC buddies that she's with now. Um, so you are seated with Charles, who you know, uh, and James, who you don't know, but you recognize him as being one of the people that came through with the throng of the group. He's like a... He's got like short cropped, like red hair. Um, he's in a, like a business suit. Like he's not really just like a party. He's like in like a business suit kind of thing. Uh, and he's just sort of playing with the, with the folks and like just being very like, he's had elbows on the table kind of guy. And he, um, he sort of turns to, to Charles like first thing. He's like, so Charles, what is it that you do exactly? And Charles just says what I told you basically where it's like, oh, I, I myself am just a man of culture and the arts at the moment. And then James turns to you and is like, what do you do? I'm a film director, darling. Film director. That is interesting. Isn't that interesting, Chuck? Isn't that interesting, Chuck? And then Ch Charles is like, I, Charles, please. He's like, sorry, Chuck. Uh, Charles, uh, do, you, do you find that the eye of a female director is different to that of a man's? I suppose you make romance movies and that sort of thing. You know, do you make romance films or that, or what you make, you fashion advertisements? What is it? You think being a film director means I'm doing fashion advertisements? Well, yes, actually. Um, to to put it more bluntly, actually, the studio is very strict about it. Um, only allowed to work with women, only allowed to stick to themes regarding um, feminine products, clothes. Oh, yeah. Uh, womanly duties, of course. Uh, one time I tried to film a scene outside of the kitchen and got quite the slap on the wrist for that one. Right. You know, America's got the right idea then. That's interesting. Um, such and then... a shame because you have such a face for film and I truly would have loved to cast you in a picture, but my womanly ways, alas, I cannot do it. That's right. I'm not really the vain sort, am I? And he sort of adjusts his tie, and then Charles has been like playing with his fork and is like letting you speak for yourself, obviously. And then Charles is surprising, James, that you talk of film as though you know it well. I have always considered film a progressive industry, revolutionizing technology and culture. And you yourself seem a man of regression. And James is reaching for like a salad roll, and Charles like takes it off the plate thing immediately before James can actually get a hold of it. And then Charles like turns to you and he's like, I'm I do apologize for him. If I had any control over the seating plans, I would have not seated us with him, but Margot is a creature all her own. It's quite all right. Let's, uh, let's try the food, shall we? I'm used to this kind of talk by now. I am sorry to hear it, but I, if you handle any of it as deftly as you just did then, I'm sure you have quite a good reputation in your industry. You don't get to making as many pictures as I do without having a good reputation, so. Absolutely. So would you like the dessert tier or the sandwich tier? I imagine a delicate woman such as yourself would prefer a sweet dessert, I'm sure. And he's like putting it on as like a joke kind of thing. 
I mean, I would be tempted to try an entree, but I don't think my delicate feminine hands could handle it. Oh, my goodness, Kit. Would you like me to help you? I believe as, as a man, it is my, is my role to do that for you. Would you please? Oh, of course. And he takes like one of like the like brownies or whatever and then puts it down there for me. He's like, and if the vapors do overcome you and you need to swoon onto a nearby couch due to the brownie, do let me know, dear. I'll call for the nearest fainting couch. Thank you. Oh, indeed. Um, <laughs> uh, and Catherine makes a great show of trying to lift the brownie and not being able to do it and ripping off a little corner instead. Like it, like it's so much yeah. weight for her to be lifting it's, as she it's needs It's just it. like so hard. Oh my goodness. Well, I've got my exercise in for the day. <laughs> Um, and James kind of keeps pestering like Charles about questions and he's like, well, you know, what sort of business is it that you do, Charles? And Charles just says, I, I just, I'm a patron of the arts, much like Margot. I don't see you asking Margot what she does for a living. And James says, well, she's married, you know, so she's got positions to do patron of the arts, that sort of thing. And she's a woman. So, you know, you know, what is it? Kate, you know, the women, you do art, isn't it? Oh, what was it? You said she was m- married. Is that m- married? What was that? Right. What's that? I'm I'm not sure. I'm familiar. Okay, you're putting it on now. You know what marriage is. Putting it on. I'm yeah. as if to wear clothes, or um, I don't no, think I put I just, anything on. He's like help. looking at Charles for help, and Charles is not helping. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Well, suppose Margot's invited people I, you know i knew margot was kind to the poor and helpless and i didn't know she was inviting people to a short brain or whatever and he sort of like just crashes over and like gets his tiny little journal out and just starts writing random numbers or whatever um and is there anybody who would like to speak to anybody who isn't at that table or anything like that i would like to speak to anyone other than this man right now <laughs> <laughs> anyone in the room other than this man <laughs> I'm really curious to know what Ginny was writing or reading like that letter. I feel like I caught a glimpse. I know that was a minute ago, but I like I'm not let it go from my brain. And I'm very interested because I'm trying to, you know, see what's happening around this place. Who's connected with what? Absolutely. It's also, happening. for the reference of Catherine's table, Charles makes a point of like just moving in James's view of vision and like just like talks to him about some stupid thing like football or something. So he doesn't bother Catherine for the rest of the time. So Catherine's a free agent. <laughs> um, but so Ginny uh, and Joe, please. So I might just, can I, can I is, is it awkward if I get up and go like, no, it's not, it's at the point where like all the food's been eaten, that kind of thing, and everyone just is kind of milling around. Milling around. All right. So you got a pen pal? Oh, hi, Joe. Uh, yeah. How, how are you today? Doing well. Just curious what's happening. Seemed oh. like you had something and you hit it real quick. Just not, not, um, not accusing of anything and none of my business, obviously. But just, uh, just... I'm glad you know it's none of your business. Um, I, you know, it's just... It's, it's something just the champagne. Personal. Maybe it's the bubbles talking. Yeah, you know? I, I, I think actually I... I may need another glass of water. Uh, do maybe the martinis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe the martini. Uh, I mean, how how was your food? Did you like it? Did you, was it good? It was fine. I, I really have this thing about the Yorkshire pudding. The thing about it is, is if you let oh. it deflate, basically as soon as it cools, it starts deflating. And it's right. not as good as when it's just fresh out of the oven and served almost immediately. There's something about the timing in this place that if they could get it just right, she could make a killing. I'm trying just trying to get Clarice to actually have a franchise of hot Yorkshire pudding stands, right? And it's like, they could be places and, you know, it help her. Right. Um, okay. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree on the Yorkshire pudding. Mm-hmm. Um, I will be sure to, uh, Back you up on that next time, yeah? Right, but this still doesn't answer, like, I'm just curious, like, oh, so are you writing, like, you have a pen pal as a, like, is it, like, a serious I, thing? I, is it, like, a man friend thing? Like, is it, like, I guess you a, can call like, it a pen pal, yeah, let's say that, you know, bold I, kind of thing. I, just, I don't know, like, lot, things so. you might have found, like, as an archaeologist, so, 
I don't yeah, know. you know, I travel a lot, so I meet a lot of people. I just like to keep in touch with uh, people I find I'm a bit more fond of. Oh, all right. So maybe we'll write some letters sometime. That's great. Sure, yeah. Sounds all like right. fun. Do you often write about your findings, the things that you find as you're out there, you know? Um. Yeah, I... I love to report back to my friends uh, about all the cool things that I find. So then they can in return tell other people so I can get my name out there. All right. All right. So it's like PR, you know, I'm really yeah. good with PR. I, I have a whole firm that I work with. Uh, I can help you really? as well. Yeah. If you want to let me know, give me like some insights as, as to when you find a new thing, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I can help you make sure it's in all the, the right papers, you know? The okay. Times, the Times, I, the New York Times, the LA Times, mm -hmm. all the big times. I, well, that would be quite wonderful, especially since, you know, that is exactly where I want to be in all the times. Great. Mm -hmm. And is there anybody else who decides to chit chat with anybody, including NPCs, who wants to accost an NPC, you're welcome to. I'm not going to have any more conversation, but I just need everyone to know that for the rest of the meal, Catherine very seriously, intently stares at what James is doing and then like looks at her own cutlery and like holds the knife upside down and like tries to figure out how to do things and just, but just silently, she's not conversing with him. <laughs> I think, uh, I think Clarice would even when the food is done or like people have very clearly like I'm done with the food she'll go around each table and just make sure everyone has had like just double check with literally everyone but the food's good uh whether the food was good and whether they would like more food <laughs> oh okay uh Vicka Thomas and Charles are both Charles especially is very like grateful for the food and like really appreciates you and that kind of thing and mm -hmm. he he kind of reaches into his pocket as if to like take out money and tip you. And then he thinks better of it because he doesn't, it's like an etiquette thing. He doesn't like feel good about it. So he puts it back and hopes you didn't notice. I um, noticed. I noticed everything. You noticed. Okay. Write that down the character sheet. <laughs> Charles Williams, bitch. Um, <laughs> um, and does anyone have any problem with Clarice's food? Or is it all good? Not the puddings, Joe. Not the <laughs> we can't. I was, gonna, I was gonna say no. I think everything else is great. Okay, wonderful. So, uh, the afternoon tea is cleared away, and the tablecloth. You're all sort of ushered out of the room so that they can change the tablecloths uh, and that kind of thing. And then we are going to be having Margot's opera recital, which I will not be performing because are you kidding me? Uh, but she brings you into the ballroom. Uh, she has like a stage that she's made. Oh, 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 oh. No, Margot's a good singer, so I can't. Um, so uh, so there's like a stage, uh, sorry, you're a good singer. I'm a bad singer, so I can't perform it. Terry, if you'd love to take it away, please do. But um, so she has a stage that she's like made up and that kind of thing. It's pretty good. It's like, it has like a spot in the wall where it's been like wheeled out from. So she obviously like has a stage in the ballroom often and she's brought in all of the guests so she can do her recital. And she has like the main role, but she's made the maids and the servants, not you, Clarice, massively, perform the other roles with her, even though they can't sing. So they're like speaking their parts. Um, and she sort of sort of gets up on the stage beforehand and she's like, thank you all so much. I hope that you enjoyed the afternoon tea. Uh, Mr. Smith has been so kind. He spent the whole morning writing up the scripts for everybody. And Mr. Smith with his, you know, the guy who had ink all over his hands and that sort of shuffles in. And he's got like the, the, the scripts up one and hands them out. Um, and then you're all sort of stuck inside the ballroom and having to watch the recital. Um, but Virginia... You are, before you go into the ballroom, you're actually pulled aside uh, and into a hallway and you recognize uh, the face of your lover, uh, except he's got like a collar on for whatever reason. And he's got like a collar and like a black sort of robe on, um, but it's very much like Joseph. And he's like, Jenny, I had to speak with you. Joe, is that you? Yes, and he's like, he looks different when you knew him because when you met him, mm -hmm. he had like a thicker beard and his hair was like longer because like he was in the army and couldn't like uh -huh. keep up with himself or whatever. And he's, I, uh, did, did you get my letter? I did this morning. It was quite lovely to read. The poor maid she almost passed away when I sort of tried to take the breakfast tray from her and it was quite embarrassing, but I'm glad that you got it. That was the important thing. I, I, I am so sorry if it is out of line, but I, I heard that you were coming, so I had to 
also because I had to see you because I had to tell you that I am and he says it like it's the most like shameful thing ever he's like I'm a vicar I have I have been a vicar for um a long time now almost since after the war oh right it's it's a appallingly rigid institution and I I understand if you respect me less for it because he's very yeah. like he sees you like it's a like worldly creature. Well, I am, you know. But, but... for the chat, his name is Joseph Thomas. Hmm. <laughs> okay, let's see here. <laughs> okay, can, can we like go into what a vicar is? Right, we that's can. a, a vicar is like a head of a church. Right, so it's, it's like a local he's church, and he's the head of the oh, church. He's your and boss. He's okay. Boss. So he's like okay. A okay yeah. So, why have you continued writing me then? Well, because I loved you, foremostly, and also because I have found that I can leave and I can convert to Protestantism where I would be allowed to marry. And he sort of like meets your eyes when he says that. And I was wondering, I know that your journeys take you many places, but if you could just promise me that you would stay in England a little while longer and we could have some time together afterwards. Could could you, would you, please? Well, my heart has always been for you. Oh, and <laughs> since I am here and you are here, I couldn't think of any other divine fate than what we have here now. And of course I would wait for you. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> and if this is our moment, then so this is our moment my love and we will have many moments to come and he like glances at your lips when he says that and then like back up at your eyes and he's like i will i will leave you oh, to your to your to your mingling and things and I, I will see you later and he's sort of like wait do the others know do those know what that um you know he's uh about the they know that he was in the war and now he's mm -hmm. a vicar he doesn't know they don't no one knows that you two are lovers okay yeah know what I... um except for people that know certain things about you because of your connection but <laughs> vicar <laughs> joseph thomas <laughs> anyway he uh. moses back upstairs to speak with rich or whatever and you go back into the opera recital um and as you're all watching uh margo doing like the second act of her recital and we're kind of like 45 minutes in and you all have to stand and clarice is regretting being up on the ground floor when she could be sitting down in the servants quarters um you hear like a kerfuffle almost at the at the doorway as some footmen are struggling with somebody and you hear like like banging at the doors uh for the for the recital room and then this misguided maid just opens the door and this man comes in and he has like a brown like workers uh like uniform on and like a bunch of like stickers on like badges and that kind of thing that have like union on them and like workers rights and all that stuff and he's got like a bunch of like cloth sacks in his hand and he just like flings it really hard and i'm gonna pick a number between one and five um <laughs> and i'm so sorry uh and that is going to be clarice you get smacked in the face with like this cloth bag that kind of like explodes once it hits you and your like nostril is filled with the scent of manure and this man is just like screaming about workers rights and the proletariat um and no the, one is the communists. their hands on him oh my god the communists are here oh my god <laughs> And he's just like, workers' rights, like House of Lords, like dismantle the House of Lords, like bring rights back to the workers, like Richard Fairfield doesn't respect unions. And like one of the footmen are like struggling to get a hand on him. Like Charles is like, I'm so sorry, my dear, to you, Catherine, and like runs over to like try and grab the guy. Um, but he flings another bag of manure and it's like explodes at Catherine's feet. It doesn't quite hit you, That's but disgusting. the number generator has decided that it did hit you in the feet. <laughs> <laughs> How people are not being hit by manure. How are you reacting? How can I yes. can I run to the stage and yes. try to protect Margot? You can, absolutely. <laughs> nice. She's she's like quite confused and like terrified and she sort of grabs onto you as you come up from the stage. She's like Maria, whatever is going on? I have never seen that man in my life. I assure you, I've never seen that man in my life. It's misdirected anger. Let's get you out of here. 
and then okay. I try to like usher her away. There's like a there's like a backstage thing that you can like go into yeah. with her, and you go there. We'll go um, into the backstage together. Yeah, into the backstage area. <laughs> Um, and the footman managed to like get a hold of the guy and then like also Richard is, has been in the recital room and you, Richard, you don't see much of him, but you see like a blur of like suit and just like grabbing the guy and like pulling him out and that kind of thing. Um, and the girl, the guy is escorted out. Um, and Hugo is very nervous looking at Clarice. And he's like, I would, did you, would you like, did me? you, yeah. Was that? Did you bring him here with no, your I didn't bring him here? I ideals? Yes. <laughs> yes. I wrote into the Baker pamphlets, and I thought I didn't know Carl Baker would show up himself. I just, I'm sorry. I just, I should not hold him. I just thought that perhaps they could write to Mister Fairfield because he's in the House of Lords, and they could discuss the union and what words are you? Speaking, child. Um, the House of Lords. Do you want me to get you to a bathroom, Miss Min? I. I enjoy working for Richard. I like being his chef. I enjoy all of the, the positives that this job and role brings me. And you, child, you have brought communists to our home. You have brought them into this life and they don't belong here. They do not. They would not. They would not do anything to, to, to serve the, uh, the- I love how you're saying all this with horseshit on your face. I have horseshit on my face. <laughs> and I'm just gonna say, this is a world of shit. And I'm just telling you, you could get out of here if you start making your own industry and get away from these communists. He says he's pro-worker, and who does he attack? He attacks me. That's why I'm telling you, you need to get out of this working business, because that's what happens. Let's get you a franchise. I'm telling you, protect this heat. So the they go that hot shit. The recital disperses and everything, um, and you all uh go up to your rooms to retire for the bit uh Wait, Catherine, can i you, can i get yes. a private moment you you will absolutely get a private moment 110 oh, yeah but uh but Catherine and clarice are obviously cleaning off but maria and margo do have a private moment in the backstage um where margo is like in this little like makeshift dressing room like spot that she's made for herself and she can tell that the co the kerfuffle has died down and everything like that um and she's oh Oh, my mama Marie, doesn't he know that I've donated to the church at least twice this mm. year? I don't understand. That was quite, that was quite, uh, scary. Scary. I'm sorry that you had to see that. I'm sorry that that happened to you. I mean, it's all right. It's not the first time that we've been attacked in that way. And I just, I thought with stronger security that it wouldn't happen again. But in fact, you have been the most protective of me this whole time, let alone security. So thank you for that, Maria. I appreciate that. Oh, there's no, there's no need to say thank you. In fact, in fact, there's a, a, a Bible verse I would like to recite to you now. Uh, indeed. Because I will always protect you, Margot. I will always, I will always protect oh. you. You are one of my fondest friends. Oh. And um, according to the Bible, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Be because fear has to do with punishment, and no one who fears is not made perfect in love. John four eighteen. That's fantastic. Does that not speak of uh, of marital love, though, Maria? Oh, it can. It can. Uh, you know, it could be interpreted that way. Of course. Um, I mean, that is your job. That's not my position. It's of course your position to interpret these things as as you wish. I'm, I simply am just taking what you are giving. You know, it is, uh, it is not our place to judge such things. You know, our Lord gives us these, these words and, and we must take them as we will. Uh, I, I agree entirely. Thank you so much for, for your help today and your presence here. I, I mean, I had the most lovely little maze race planned. Do you think that we, we will still be able to do it? Oh, I, uh, whatever would make you the happiest, you know, whatever would make you the happiest. I, well, I, I already have you when she like squeezes your hand and looks into your eyes. Which is oh, like, oh, bro, my, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just start giggling, which is the first time she's ever seen me giggle, but I giggle. Um, and, uh, I'm just like, oh, you know, 
I'm realizing that I'm flirting with my friends a lot in this session, and I didn't mean for that, but this is intriguing. It's okay. It's a thirsty, it's... fun game. I like it. It's you all hate each other, so I have to bring in the thirst and the fun and the romance, so it's fine. Um, so Margot and Maria have the little moment backstage, mm -hmm. uh, and Catherine, are you washing? How are you disposing of the manure upon your shoes? Do you just throw out the shoes into the lake? Do you? <laughs> I'm going to be honest. That's not a sentence I expected to hear today. No. Yeah, well, hey, welcome to Holly's the GM. You got Holly's <laughs> boots on your fancy shoes. <laughs> uh, I think Catherine is in like a washroom or something, mm -hmm. and she's sitting perched while Amy is probably cleaning her shoes for her. Like I imagine Amy's the one doing the scrubbing, and Catherine's sitting there talking to her, telling her about where she lives, what's going on, what would go with her outfit, what she's going to like about being in Hollywood and just, you know, going on and on and on. And uh, she's not particularly bothered by what happened. Okay. That's good. It makes so, for a good important. story. And as long as she got a good story out of it, that's all that matters. That's the most important thing. And Clarice, how are you uh, cleaning off the, how's your little vignette of cleaning yourself? <laughs> slightly less well um i probably have um poor hugo i poor boy he's poor hugo he, is one he, of the rights for workers he's just like dabbing at her face and like cleaning off bits as she kind of and he brought them here and you just need to no, stop miss, reading I, just, I reading is not good for anybody it just gives you fantasies I was hoping they would speak to Sir Fairfield. I didn't think they would come in and throw... Extremists <laughs> don't speak. They just, they just yell and they just, they just throw things at the innocents. Do you mean communists, ma'am? What do you mean? Who's the... Who's what? Extremists? Yes. Extremists. Oh, extremists, ma'am. Yes. As, as I was wondering what a streamer was. I was thinking to myself, how could some paper upon the wall be speaking? Sounds absurd, but no, extremists indeed. I mean, boy, the ideas in your head are just ludicrous. I, I'm so confused. What? I was like, streamers, <laughs> the craziest ideas. Um, so Hugo is helping you uh, clean off your face as you tell them to stop reading, um, <laughs> and everyone sort of cleans off their face. And about like half an hour passes where everyone's just like doing whatever they they're they're doing about their day uh and then margot brings in everybody everyone who's still in the mood to do so which is all of you because you're all res just durable like that um to the big hedge maze like the east of the of the mansion um and there's still like some sun in the sky it's starting to set um but the, the hedge maze is like gigantic so when you look up at the top of it it's like seven feet tall and the sun gets in your eyes because of how it's setting and if you look to the side you can see that it sort of curves in like a, a curved rectangle kind of shape um but it's incredibly green well clipped not like a leaf out of place um the shrubbery is very healthy looking and when you look through the entrance because there's one main entrance of the hedge maze you can see that it would fit maybe two people across maybe three at like a squeeze uh and margot is at the front in another outfit again. She's now in more of like an evening dress kind of thing and like a little shawl around her shoulders. Um, and she is saying, I thank you all so much for uh, being here today and, and entertaining. And it was so good to meet all of you. And it's been the most wonderful weekend. And I thought that we simply had not touched this maze yet. And that is a cry and shame. And I have placed the most wonderful prize at the end of the maze for all of you. And I will give you a hint as to what it is. And then she gives a wink to you, Maria. And then she like, just like a shot. It's just like through, runs through the maze herself. And then like runs, you see her go to the right. And that's like it. Um, and now I'm going to ask you all to go into the maze and then you're all going to tell me which way you turn first. So, Maria, you enter the maze. Do you turn left or right? I'm running after. Uh, I turn right. I'm going to follow her. I'm going to try to follow her. <laughs> okay, you can keep going straight ahead or you can go right again. Uh, oh, uh, let's go straight. Okay, you go straight ahead. Um, you can now go uh, left or you can go right. Left. You hear a dead end. Fuck. Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> you go into the maze. <laughs> uh, which way do you go? Do you go right or left? Right. Okay. Do you go straight ahead or do you go right? Uh, she's going to go right again. 
Okay, you hit a dead end. Uh, Josephine. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going left. You, you're going left. You hit a dead end. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> there's a lot of dead ends in this maze that I brought up. I'm really sorry about that. Um, <laughs> Clarice, you enter the maze. Right. Okay, do you go straight or right after that? Straight. Okay, all good. Do you go left or right after that? Right. Okay, you keep going. Do you go right or straight ahead? Straight. You get to the end of the maze. All right, you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I've been uh, studying. You, 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 all right, so you curve around and such, and then you have a straight ahead or you have to your right. Which way do you go? Um, Straight ahead. Okay, you, uh, unfortunately, Virginia, you, I'm sorry, you didn't get to go through the maze no that maze far because Clarice has gotten into the middle of the maze. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> first try. <laughs> um, and you, so in the middle of the maze, not the end of the maze, we're in the middle of the maze now. There is like this square um sort of rectangle block and it's got like a statue of like some dog that richard once had and the statue itself is like covered in moss that kind of thing but you can hear like a sobbing sound from the other side of the statue and as you come around you find margot and she's just like draped over um the body of richard and when she sort of pulls back you can see he has like a gunshot wound like right in his chest and it looks like relatively old and he's just completely white and and still and we fade to black and that's the end of the season. Oh, well, I'm happy. Oh, good job getting maze. through the maze. Oh. Very well. Oh. First time I've ever done well at a game, ever. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, gosh. Wow. Oh, my goodness. There's been a murder. There's there has been, been a murder. 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 Oh, my goodness. And I know we may all think that we didn't get to meet Richard very well, but in the second and third episodes, there are a lot of flashback rounds, and that's where we get to meet Richard more mm. so but Ooh. yeah that's the end of the episode for tonight um Yum. yeah um and we'll be doing this again uh next sunday and the sunday after that where we'll be playing into more of the the system some more and doing the accusations and the motives and like i am just so excited for all of you to rip each other's throats out it's going to be it's gonna be brutal like, oh, gentle oh Oh. <laughs> oh. Wait, who who do we all suspect so far? Literally everyone. I was gonna say <laughs> everyone. I suspect Ginny the most because she's like the most unsuspecting, you know? Ooh. Okay, Miss I'm a nun. <laughs> okay. okay, Miss I'm a nun. I, yeah, nun I think the nun. sassy nun who is flirting with Margot. <laughs> what? No one I've sounds seen like that. Someone. Yeah. I did no not expect like that. the first line Maria's mouth to be like, did you get to address today? I was like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're going in. All right. <laughs> um, but that was super duper fun. I absolutely loved that. Thank you all so much um, for joining me. But before we say uh, goodbye to stream and that kind of thing, I would like to go around again uh, and for all of you to plug your social medias, uh, starting with Nega Oryx. Hi, I am Nega Oryx. Uh, you can find me on all social platforms, Twitch, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, everything is the same handle n-e-g-a-o-r-y-x come say hi sometime i'm a cast member on a bunch of other ttrpg shows i'm a full-time variety streamer dead by daylight partner um i'm a host you might catch me hosting the weekly on twitch gaming sometimes along with lots of other fun stuff thank you so much for having me this was a great first episode yeah thank you so much for being here and uh nova I am still reeling at the fact that Margo winked at me before leading us to her husband's dead body. Woo! I'm really into it. I think Margo killed him. I don't know. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Novalisi. Nice to meet you. I'm a variety streamer on Twitch, at Novalisi on absolutely everything. So follow me, Twitch, Twitter, TikTok, all the things. Um, and uh, yeah, I just had a blast. So thank you so much for having me. And I promise I'm not this mean in real life. <laughs> You are so nice in person. That's why everything Maria says like catches me off guard, and I'm like, oh my goodness. This character is like the furthest I've ever gone from my like true like who I am actually, and so this oh, has been like a good challenge, but it's also really fun. <laughs> fantastic. Uh, and Krista, would you like to plug your social medias? Hi, I'm Christology again. Um, I'm a variety streamer here on Twitch. Do YouTube videos, movie reactions, all of that. So you can find that at Christology on Twitch and 
YouTube, and then on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, you can find me at Christology TV. Yay! And Terry. Oh, what up, everybody? Um, Terry Gamble. You can find me at the Terry Gamble on most of the internet. Um, you can also find my scary movie podcast, Horror Movie Survival Guide. Um, weekly podcast comes out on all the places you get the podcast, you know, like Apples and the Stitchers and wherever, Spotify. Um, check it out. We have an interview coming up this week. We just do a, a couple of interviews that I cannot tell you yet. Some more celeb interviews that I'm like freaking out about. I actually cried after one of them this last week because I was so excited. That's so so look out for those coming out the next couple of months. Some really good stuff stuff and great films that we'll be covering um and i do a bunch of other stuff just follow me on the other things and join us for heartbeats on friday um on the ripley improv twitch um at six o'clock pacific time um it is getting a uh, dicey dicey because i am might be a pregnant doctor who might be pregnant with like the a person who died before the show even started kid like it's a lot of drama like you think Ooh. this is drama it's like a lot of drama it's a lot of fun too it's basically like if you had Grey's anatomy fully improvised that's what we do and it's really, really i fun. love that it's fun it's so yeah. fun um and hannah would you like to plug your social media hello uh i'm louise hannah um also not as up myself as my character um <laughs> i'm louisiana literally everywhere on um twitch i play a lot of um jrpgs and variety games and stuff and i just want to say a massive thank you uh i was so anxious to, oh, to we have been so tense holly and i have been dming just our anxieties to each other over the last few days and just thank you all so much for being so supportive so wonderful and I just want to thank also the the cast because you're inc everything is just so good and I'm just so excited. It's so fun. Um, and hi, I'm Holly. I was the facilitator today. I'm Bread Witchery on everything ever. My Twitter is particularly good, um, and my Twitch is fine as well. I guess I guess it's my job, whatever. Um, but I stream story based games uh, on there and narrative driven stuff. I'm currently playing through Little Nightmares, which is really fun. Um, and yeah, you can find Bread Witchery on everything. Also, that's Bagheera being an absolute sweetheart. I he's so cute. I'm gonna cry. Um, but thank you all so much for the support today. We have a Discord, uh, as you can see in the chat, and we also have a Patreon. Again, we're like three patrons away from our goal. Um, and if you want to support our channel so we could do more fun episodes um, and sort of support the cast and that kind of thing, that would be awesome. But thank you so much for hanging out and chat, mods, um, everybody just chatting and being nice. This is my second time GMing ever. And I'm oh so, I was so, I was so nervous. I was you like, smashed it. I, yeah, geez. Um, but so yeah, thank you for being so supportive. I really appreciate it. Um, and we will see you next Sunday. And thank you again to the amazing cast um, for being fantastic in the first episode. And I believe we are going to raid somebody. Who are we raiding, Hannah? Um, good question. Just seeing who's live. <laughs> um, um. You know, the stories told has a Twitter. It's oh. twitter.com forward slash stories told. Do we um do we do anything on Patreon if we reach our goal? Um yeah, so if we reach our goal of 35 patrons, we're going to do on the Stories Told channel, we'll do a campaign of honey heist, uh, with like streamers who the patrons can probably select or like vote for which like returning cast members they want to see do it. Honey Heist is a little one-shot, two-shot thing where you play as criminal bears trying to steal honey, and you have two stats: criminal and bear. So, ooh, is saving is saving throw live at the minute? Yeah. Oh my god, can we wait saving throw? Oh yes, please? absolutely. Please. Yeah, just saving throw show. They're fantastic. They're doing another Amazing. new pantheon. Okay, um, I will start that raid going as we wish. Cast Dick. You Thank all you. a lovely, lovely evening or yeah. day, um, and we'll see you next week.